Welcome to Fantasy Audiobook, Demon Slayer. Sign in from Mount Sagiri. Chapter 1. Late Night, Mount Sagiri. Behind a wooden house in the deep mountains, a young man in grey feather knitting slowly put down the wooden knife in his hand, with an unconcealable sharpness in his brows. In the open space ten meters away from him, there was a huge stubborn rock. However, what was shocking was that as the young man's gaze focused, a gap was suddenly opened in the stubborn stone, and then it was divided into two halves. Ding, it is detected that the host has swung the knife 9,999 times, and the system is officially activated. The young man nodded slightly, and the mechanical notification sounded again. Ding, novice task, please go to the depths of Mount Sagiri at midnight tonight, and sign in at the abandoned temple. Ding, the system has detected that the time has come, and the task has been activated for you. The host please go to the abandoned temple to sign in as soon as possible, and you will get system rewards. Mount Sagiri, the starting location in the story, is where Kamado Tanjiro follows Yorokodaki Sakanji to learn water breathing. But from this moment on, it is the place where the youth leave the customs. Three months ago, Beto woke up and found himself at the foot of a barren mountain, surrounded by Nod corpses. Through the memory of this body, he discovered that this world is the Demon Slayer, and there are three full years before the plot begins. In other words, Kocho Kanae didn't die, and Nezuko didn't turn into a ghost. Beto has plenty of time to intervene in the plot and even change it. However, he immediately discovered that his body was severely damaged, and he was far from meeting the conditions for fighting ghosts. So after some searching, he boarded Mount Sagiri and learned water breathing from Yurokodaki Sakanji. Now, Beto has chopped off the largest stubborn stone with a wooden knife and has obtained the qualification to participate in the final trial. But before that, he had to go down the mountain to do one thing, to kill ghosts. Dot dot dot. Mount Sagiri is a mysterious place shrouded in mist all year round. Thanks to the blessing of the former water column Yurokodaki Sakanji, there are almost no ghosts here, and ordinary ghosts will avoid hearing this name. But in the abandoned temple deep in Mount Sagiri, a ghost has infiltrated. He is the ogre left to Tanjiro by Yurokodaki Sakanji as a test in the plot. The place Beidou is going to this time is the abandoned temple where the ghost is. Generally speaking, before the final trial, there are very few ghost-slaying swordsmen who have direct contact with ghosts, and they often follow their masters to participate in the battle with ghosts. Instead of going to the ghost's lair alone like Beto. More importantly, today's Beto has not received the Nishiran blades given by Lintaki, and only has a low-quality wooden knife in his hand. This also means that without the assistance of Nishiran blades, he can only drag the ghost alive until the sunrise to eliminate it, which requires great patience and physical strength. The difficulty is also doubled. But looking at Beidou's appearance, he didn't have the slightest stance to stop, and he just kept going forward. Three months was enough time for his swordsmanship to reach an inhuman level, and he was no longer the boy who crawled out of the pile of corpses. Besides, he has already mastered the breath of water, and he can't wait to try it out. Just start with that ogre. Gradually, Beidou shuttled through the thick clouds and fog, and his vision became blurred. At this time, it was late at night, and Mount Sagiri was almost invisible. Without great courage and perception, it was impossible to walk in the mountains. Feeling the fog around him getting thicker, Beto also narrowed his eyes. But he didn't back down, instead he gritted his teeth and sped up the speed. Finally, as a ray of moonlight fell on Beto, a dilapidated temple also appeared in the field of vision. Ding! Congratulations to the host for successfully arriving at the sign-in location, and the sign-in officially begins. The sign-in time is 10 seconds, and if you quit halfway, it will be considered a sign-in failure. A familiar prompt sounded in his ear, and a smile appeared on the corner of Beidou's mouth. Unexpectedly, in the next second, a sudden killing intent descended. Zila, it seemed that some creature was flicking its tongue and let out a hungry roar. Beto had already anticipated the ghost, and as he took a deep breath, he launched a fearless charge again. Roar, sure enough, a humanoid creature with dark skin and bulging eyes appeared, looking at Beto unscrupulously, as if he had discovered something delicious. It was a hungry ogre. At the same time, the system beep is counting down. Lucky, there is a big meal delivered to your door. 7. Let me taste how tender your skin is, hee <laughs> hee.
6. Before the words finished, the ogre had already stretched its legs and rushed towards Beto. Smelling the stench coming towards him, Beto also clenched the wooden knife tightly. This is his first time confronting a real ghost, but it definitely won't be the last. Water breath one shape water surface slash. Beto swung the wooden knife quickly, and a surprising scene happened. The invisible sword light cut a gap in the air, and there was the faint sound of running water. This is the power of water breathing, to overcome rigidity with softness. Crack, facing the menacing blow, the ogre dodged subconsciously, but even so, half of his arm was cut off. In the depths of Mount Sagiri, a miserable cry sounded. However, in just a few breaths, a new arm grew out of his shoulder, even thicker than the previous one, which is enough to show how amazing the ghost's resilience is. 3, 2, 1, seeing the ogre rushing towards him like crazy, Beto also frowned. At the critical moment, the mechanical notification sound also ushered in the end. 0, ding, congratulations to the host, the sign-in is successful. Mission reward, the perfect Sishengwan template. At this critical moment, the wooden knife at Beidou's fingertips suddenly glowed white. Countless sword lights suddenly appeared from his eyes, like sharp swords bursting out of the sky, condensing on the wooden knife. In an instant, that powerful coercion collided with the ogre. With a scream, the ghost flew out hanging upside down. What is even more incredible is that before the ogre fell to the ground, every one of his blood vessels burst, and blood poured out immediately. There were popping sounds one after another, as if a balloon had been popped. Ah, looking at that ghost again, it has completely lost its fighting power, because every wound on him is flooded with terrifying sword light. As soon as the wound recovered, it was immediately torn apart by Jian Guang. How, how is it possible? The ogre raised its head tremblingly, looked at Beidou with an unbelievable look, and its head buzzed. Is it breathing? No, it seems stronger than that. It's not that he has never met a ghost swordsman in the past, and he has eaten many members of the ghost slaying team, but this is the first time he has seen such a special existence as Beidou. Moreover, the method Beidou used seems to have nothing to do with breathing. Contrary to the shock of the ogre, Beidou opened his eyes at this time, revealing a sword aura vaguely. The attack that penetrates the ghost's body is the powerful demon power of Seshomaru. As we all know, Seshomaru is the big brother of Inuyasha's half-brother. His father is Do Yuang, the leader of the demon tribe in the Western Kingdom. He has the blood of all demons. With Seshomaru's strength in Demon Slayer, it's completely slashing with one ride. And he can also release the demon power to make his own strength, speed, spirit, endurance and other comprehensive attributes be improved by leaps and bounds, and the wounds will also quickly regenerate and recover. It is simply the existence of bug level. In the past, Beto died tragically in the barren mountains and was driven and bitten by wild beasts precisely because of his weakness. But after getting the perfect Sishengwan template, he is no longer what it used to be. Just the pressure of the sword unconsciously released by Beto was enough to make the ogre feel terrified, not even having the slightest thought of fighting. As Beto opened his eyes again, the sword light surrounded the wooden knife. Exudes an unspeakable power. Gulu. Feeling the endless pressure coming, the ogre couldn't help but shivered. Just as he wanted to run away, he was crushed into scum by the sword light. Instead, it disappeared into the wind. In the original book, Ms. Tamayo once mentioned three ways to eliminate ghosts, one is the sun, the other is Nishiran blades, and the third is to destroy the cells of the ghost's body. What Beidou is implementing now is undoubtedly the third method. However, this level alone can't satisfy Beidou's curiosity, he can't help but want to try it. What would be the effect of increasing the sword pressure to the maximum? Buzz. The bright sword light burst out from the wooden knife, and even formed a beam of light that pierced through the thin clouds. The ruined temple behind him collapsed with a bang, kicking up a cloud of dust. The majestic sword light made Mount Sagiri tremble. At the same time, in the courtyard of the ghost-killing squad headquarters. Looking at the beam of light rising from the sky, the man suddenly frowned, and a look of surprise flashed in his eyes. My lord, that seems to be the direction of Mount Sagiri. Makajiro kun, please be calm. Sitting in the courtyard was a man in a snow colored kimono, with a faint smile on his mouth, as if he had expected it. What is shocking is that the man was severely disfigured from the face up and was almost blind in both eyes. He was already weak. 
He is the leader of the Ghost Killing Squad, honored by the Pillars as Lord Master. Ubuyashiki Kagaya, and the red and yellow-haired man who discovered the strangeness just now is the father of the current Yenju Rengoku Shinjiro and Rengoku Kyujiro. In addition to the two, there were several pillars in the courtyard who also had their eyes tightly wrinkled, obviously noticing the vision that happened on Mount Sagiri. But because Ubuyashiki did not speak, everyone remained silent. It seems that everyone has also noticed that there is a strong aura in the area under the jurisdiction of the former Shueju Yorokotaki Sakanji. Although it is not yet confirmed whether it is an enemy or a friend, it is enough to attract our attention. Besides, Mount Sagiri is far away from the headquarters, but everyone can feel the presence of the breath, which is enough to show how powerful its source is, so. Ubuyashiki Kagaya is still Furui Wubo, but if you observe carefully, you can see a hint of worry on his brows. I suggest that some of the pillars present here go to find out the situation. If it is a human swordsman, we must communicate with it properly, if it is Kibutsuji Muzan or the ghost of the string, we will kill him at all costs. Before the words were finished, all the pillars knelt on one knee and lowered their heads. Ubuyashiki Kagaya nodded slightly, announcing the candidates for the investigation mission. Sound column Uzui Tengen, Snake Pillar Iguro Obanai. There was a pause in the voice, Ubuyashiki seemed to have thought of something, and took a deep look aside, there is also Yenju Rengoku Shinjiro, please three to carry out this task. Yes, following Ubuyashiki's order, the atmosphere in the courtyard gradually became tense. In addition to the three pillars who were named, another pillar behind also raised his head, Amitabha, my lord, I am willing to go together. Hearing this person's words, Ubuyashiki Kagaya smiled and shook his head. Mr. Shingming, having three pillars is enough, besides, Master Linlong is also near Mount Sagiri, so he will check it if he thinks about it. Yes, the giant man dressed as a monk nodded and fell into silence again. Seeing that no one else raised any objections, Ubuyashiki Kagaya nodded with a smile, and waved his hand, then, let's go. I wish everyone prosperous martial arts. Yes. Meanwhile, Mount Sagiri. Beidou left the abandoned temple with nothing in his hand. Because Sesamaru's monster power was too powerful, the wooden knife had been crushed into powder. Similarly, Beidou discovered that the system not only rewarded the Sesomaru template, but also improved his swordsmanship to an astonishing level. Walking on the mountain road, Beidou intentionally released a faint sword pressure, and the beasts hiding in the darkness fell silent. Whoever dares to speak out, the ogre is the best example. Until he finally returned to the cabin, the system beeped again. Ding, a new check-in task is released. The host is requested to go to the depths of the Vine Attack Mountain to sign in within a week, and you will receive system rewards. The Vine Attack the Mountain. Isn't that the place for the final selection? According to the development of the plot, Beto, as the inheritor of the lineage of Breath of Water, was originally going to participate in this trial. System tasks are just icing on the cake. In Beto's memory, Tengshi Mountain is the place of trial for the Ghost Slayer Squad. There are dozens of ghosts on the mountain, the most powerful of which is a Tioni. The Ghost Killing Team is an organization born to kill ghosts. 500 years ago in the Warring States period, because of the evil deeds of the Ghost King Kibutsuji Muzan, Ji Guiwan, known as the First Swordsman, and several Ghost Swordsmen established a Ghost Killing Team, which has been called Ghost Hunters since ancient times. After being trained by cultivators from various places, the Swordsmen pass the final selection, surviving for seven days on the Fujisai Mountain where the ghosts are imprisoned, and then they can join the team and be equipped with Nishiran blades and crows to perform tasks. According to the normal trajectory, Beidou should have participated in this trial. And the system has already indicated the second check in location, maybe there will be a more lucrative reward than the perfect Sesomaru template. But before leaving, Beidou decided to say hello to Yorokotaki Sakanji. Crackling, thanks to the strengthening of the Sesomaru template, Beidou could clearly hear the sound of firewood burning even though he was far away. The old man cooking outside the wooden house is Yorokotaki Sakanji. Master, are you back? Sit down. Master Ryotaki wears a red tengu mask and a water blue haori. Although he is old, no one will underestimate him. After all, he is the former water column. There was such a big commotion at Mount Sagiri, of course Ryotaki guessed what it was. 
He seemed to know that Beto was here to say goodbye, so he didn't say too much, but silently filled a bowl of rice and handed it over. You must return safely. Feeling the repression in Master Rinaki's words, Beto nodded firmly. In the past ten years, because of Tioni's deliberate targeting, all the swordsmen of the Breath of Water lineage were killed by vines attacking the mountain, and it was not until the appearance of Tanjiro that the deadlock was broken. Now Beidou is pinning all of Lintaki's hopes, and he wants to embark on a journey. But before that, Yurokodaki Sakanji still has something to tell him. There is still some time before the final selection, but I believe that with your strength, you should be able to pass smoothly. It's the kid Makomo, oh. The Makomo he was talking about was one of the swordsmen killed by Tioni in the original book. Because Beidou came three years ago, it happened to be the same group of swordsmen as Makomo, she didn't die, and Sabido and Tomioka Gyu didn't go up the mountain yet. You go first, and I will consider letting her go down the mountain when she chops up the stones in the backyard. I believe you will meet in the final selection. Yurokodaki Sakanji's voice was low, as if he was still not confident in Makomo's strength. After hearing these words, Beidou nodded, he believed that since Master Lintaki said so, there must be his reasons. What's more, Master Linlong didn't want to lose any more disciples. Take it, I hope it can help you. Beidou leaned over and saw two more things in Yurokodaki Sakanji's hand, a handful of old Nishiran blades and a fox mask. Because this sword originally belonged to Master Ryodaki, the color cannot be changed. When Beidou officially passes the final selection, the demon killing team will equip him with new Nishiran blades. And this pair of masks with sword patterns is the disaster eliminating fox mask that symbolizes this lineage. I see, Master. Beidou took the two things solemnly, and then bid farewell to Master Lintaki. Just as he was packing his bags and preparing to go down the mountain, the three pillars of the ghost killing team also came to the depths of Mount Sagiri. Even though the headquarters of the Ghost Slayer squad is far away from Mount Sagiri, they arrived here in a short time, and they didn't show any signs of fatigue. The source of all this is the breathing method they use. In order to fight against powerful ghosts, the ghost-slaying swordsmen headed by Ji Guiwan have developed a technique that can fight ghosts with human bodies, that is, the method of concentrated breathing. By using the breathing method, the swordsman's heart and lung function will expand instantly, so that the blood can absorb a large amount of oxygen, which can greatly increase the combat power in an instant, and even have the physical strength to compete with ghosts. Since the death of Ji Guiwan, the breath of the sun has also been lost, and gradually derived the five breath systems of water, flame, rock, thunder and wind, and the subsequent flowers, insects, snakes, love, and beasts are also derived from these five breaths. Rengoku Shinjiro, who walks at the front of the team, is the inheritor of the breath of fire. Master Yan Zhu, that person seems to have left. Igiro Obanai behind him observed the movement around him, and after confirming that there were no signs of biological activity, he slowly said, look. Not urgent. Rengoku Shinjiro nodded slightly, while leaning down to pick up something. The next moment, his thick black eyebrows frowned suddenly, and indescribable shock flashed in his eyes. This, this is, what was needing between him was a broken stone. It's just that on this stone, there is a certain unknown atmosphere that makes him feel at a loss. What's even more incredible is that the surface is covered with traces of chopping. And it seems that these chopping marks were not intentional. This is a swordsman, and a swordsman with superb swordsmanship. Just as Rengoku Shinjiro came slowly, Uzui Tengen and Igiro Obanai patted him on the shoulder. Master Yan Zhu, you, look quickly. How? Meikajiro raised his head inadvertently, but his gaze froze immediately. Because in their field of vision, there is actually a collapsed temple, every pillar, every tile and even every part of the temple. It is full of cracks cut by swords. It's completely dense. After a long time, Rengoku Shinjiro also made a shameful sound. It seems that I miscalculated. That swordsman's swordsmanship is not just superb. A few days later, Beido quickly came to the foot of Fujishi Mountain according to the location provided by Master Lintaki. At this time, he changed into a new set of Haori, and his whole body exuded a sharp and determined temperament, like an invisible sword. During this period of time, Beido also gradually adapted to the perfect Seshomaru template, and he found that in order to activate subsequent moves, he needed more demonic power. The way to get demon power is to kill more ghosts. 
so those ghosts who attack the mountain in the vine have become Beto's possession in a sense. In the middle of the night, he silently embarked on the mountain road of the vine attacking the mountain. The night above the head is mottled, only a pale evil moon hangs in the air, and the quiet Tengshi mountain also looks very strange. There is a mysterious purple flower called wisteria in the mountains. In addition to being invincible all the year round, this kind of flower has another magical effect, that is, its flower juice is a kind of poison to ghosts, and the ghost killing team also uses this method to trap these ghosts. After obtaining the perfect Sishengguan template, Beidou could clearly feel the wind and grass around him, and even notice the breath of ghosts. Unlike Tanjiru's nasal breathing, Beidou's super sense of smell allows him to judge the situation by the smell of the wind, which is more inclined to the demon. And as you go up, the breath of ghosts becomes stronger. It wasn't until Beidou's footsteps stopped halfway up the mountain that the smell faded away a little. Looking carefully, ghost-slaying swordsmen from all over the place were already surrounded. Among them are not only the five basic breaths, but also some swordsmen who have derived breaths. For example, the newly promoted sound column Uzui Tengen and snake column Iguro Obanai developed new breath sounds and snake sounds by themselves. Of course, if the power of this breathing method is too weak, it will be lost quickly. As long as these ghost-slaying swordsmen can survive for seven days, they can officially become members of the ghost-killing team, divided into ten levels, A, B, C, D, Wu, Ji, Zheng, Shin, Rangui. On top of this, there are nine pillars. There are two conditions to become a pillar, one is to kill at least fifty ghosts, and the other is to kill a twelve kazuki. It sounds simple, but in reality it is difficult no matter what the conditions are. One ogre is enough to cause headaches, let alone fifty ghosts. When an ordinary ghost-slaying swordsman meets twelve kazuki, he becomes a cannon fodder. Everyone, thank you for coming to tonight's final selection for the Ghost Slayer Squad. While the ghost swordsmen were waiting, two children in pink kimonos with a height of half a person came silently, holding small lanterns in their hands. The hair color of the two children is black and the other is white, except that they look and dress exactly the same, and the black-haired boy named Ubuyashiki Korea as the new master in the future. But now, he is just a big guy in women's clothing. Since the Ubuyashiki family is short-lived for generations, especially boys are more likely to die young, Ubuyashiki Korea was raised by Kagaya as a girl since childhood to pray for safety. Seeing that the Ghost Slayer swordsmen were almost here, the two boys nodded. In this vine attack mountain, the ghosts captured alive by the swordsmen of the ghost killing team are imprisoned. Gaiwu can't leave here. Because from the foot of the mountain to the middle of the mountain, wisteria flowers that ghosts hate are blooming all year round. However, there will be no wisteria flowers from here up, and there will be ghosts. Survival in this mountain for seven days is the qualification for the final selection. Good luck to everyone. When the two boys were announcing the rules, Beidou was also silently looking at the ghost-slaying swordsmen around him, and an acquaintance among them was waving to him. To be precise, it is the little senior sister. Beidou, here. The girl was petite and lovely, with dark green mid-length hair, a pair of blue eyes shining with joy, and wearing a fox mask with flower patterns on her cheeks. She is Makomo, the disciple who was taken in by Lintaki before Beidou. Seeing Makomo running excitedly, Beidou Gujing Wubo's face was slightly moved, and he said with a light smile, little senior sister. Hearing this familiar title, Makomo's little face turned red. Because she came to the Lintaki gate earlier than Beidou, she is indeed a senior sister, but considering her age, Beidou called her a small name again. Little senior sister, it sounds a bit ambiguous no matter how you hear it. Stop talking about this, Beidou, are you ready? Makomo asked curiously. In Mount Sagiri, the two often practice against each other, so Makomo knows that Beidou is far better than herself, but she is always criticized by Master Ryodaki. Beidou slightly nodded and said, Well, what about you? Facing Beidou's calm attitude, Makomo seemed a little uneasy, I. Actually, the master said that I still need to practice a little more, but considering that the time is up, I had no choice but to let me go down the mountain. Makomo's voice was very soft, as if he was not very confident, but once I see you, I am not so nervous. The truth is this truth, but she always has a different meaning when she says it. Um, Beidou nodded, 
he could see that Makomo was under a bit of pressure because of Master Ryodaki, but with him there was no danger. As for that Tioni, already included in the kill list by Beidou. Soon, after Ubuyashiki Korea finished speaking the rules, a group of ghost swordsmen also broke through the barrier one after another, and headed towards the depths of Fujiji Mountain. The final selection officially begins. Russell. In the dark vine-covered mountain, figures shuttled endlessly, and the sound of walking through the forest and beating leaves kept ringing out. As the final selection began, all the swordsmen disappeared one after another. Not long after, the sound of roaring and screaming came from a certain corner. I don't know which lineage of swordsmen encountered a ghost. Beto, there seems to be a ghost over there. Makomo, who was running, frowned slightly, a look of worry flashed in his eyes, and his movements slowed down. Sensing her mood swings, Beto smiled faintly, don't be afraid, little senior sister. Um, hearing Beto's consolation, Makomo was inexplicably relieved. Soon, rustling sounds came from the front, and several black shadows suddenly stopped them. Zila, the guys from the ghost-killing team, have they come to deliver sacrifices again? That chick over there is mine, no one will take it. Under the mottled moonlight, Makomo could vaguely see their faces, which suddenly turned pale. Fortunately, she was only shocked for a while, and she immediately cheered up again. Beto, it's a ghost, we. Just as Makomo was restless and was about to use the breath of water to fight, a shadow wearing gray by you flew away. It was Beto with a smile on his lips. Buzz. What was even more surprising was that the dark gray Nishiran blades in Beto's hands actually sounded clanging and metallic. His indomitable momentum quickly attracted the attention of the two ghosts. Hee <laughs> hee, isn't this kid afraid of death? You forgot, the swordsmen did the same thing last time, they seem to have no brains. It's okay to have no brains, I love brains the most. As he spoke, the ogre licked his chapped lips, and hunger gleamed in his two red light-like eyes. They swallowed, then raised their legs and threw themselves at Beto. Unexpectedly, in the blink of an eye, a powerful coercion suddenly descended, directly crushing Lurgi's back, and there were two creaking sounds in the air. Why, what's going on? I can't seem to move. They raised their heads in unison, and what greeted the two ghosts was an invisible blade, which directly cut off the black neck. Until the two heads rolled to the ground, the eyes were still shining with shock and disbelief. On the other hand, on Beidou's face, there was still that faint smile at the corner of his mouth. A faint breath flew from the ghost, and soon flowed into Beidou's blood, turning into usable demon power. And they also crumbled to dust under the Nishiran blades. Bei, Beidou, looking at Makomo at the side, his eyes widened, his two small hands were clenched into fists, and his body was tense. She thought that Beidou would be haunted by two ghosts, and she also considered going to help. Who would have thought that the two ghosts would be beheaded by him in the blink of an eye? And Beidou seems to be taking it easy. Little sister, let's go. What? Makomo felt someone patting her on the shoulder, and she just woke up like a dream, and blushed in response. Along the way, Makomo was full of curiosity about Beidou's strength. If she knew that the scene just now was just the tip of the iceberg to Beidou, how would she feel? Ah, just as the two were walking together, a miserable cry for mercy suddenly came from the depths of the dense forest. Please, please let me go. No, don't eat me. Hearing this voice, Makomo and Beidou looked at each other, and both couldn't help walking towards the source. Before coming here, Yurokodaki Sakanji explained that the headquarters of the Demon Slayer squad will send swordsmen and even Zu to observe the entire trial process and make evaluations based on their performance. This also means that if Beidou and Makomo survive for seven days, each time they kill a ghost, the initial level will be higher after becoming an official team member. Help, help, finally, at the moment of pulling away a piece of grass, a bloody picture came into view. The bloated body, the khaki arms, and the chilling eyeballs in the arms. It's the Tioni in the story. At this moment, in his hand, he was holding a disheveled swordsman tightly, and he was about to throw it into his mouth and eat it. Beidou's eyes turned cold, and he stepped into his sight together with Makomo. Just as the two approached, the system's notification sound came as scheduled. Ding! Congratulations to the host for successfully arriving at the sign-in location, and the sign-in officially begins. 
The sign in time is 10 seconds, and if you quit halfway, it will be considered a sign in failure. Not surprisingly, the countdown also sounded soon. 10, 9, 8, Beto smiled faintly, and at the same time pulled out the Nishiran blades glowing with silver light. He didn't have any fear in his heart, only killing intent remained. Feeling an inexplicable momentum approaching, Tioni's two largest eyeballs moved away and looked towards this side. Yohu, here we go again, my cute little fox. And there are two of them. Glancing at Tioni's coveted gaze, Makomo couldn't help shivering, and clenched the Nishiran blades, which were a bit long for her. She found out that Tioni actually knew herself. No, to be precise, it's the fox mask on the forehead. Fox boy, how old is Meiji now? Da, Taisho, Makomo subconsciously said. Taisho, seeing Tioni was stunned for a moment, then he shouted, as if very angry, the era, the era has changed. It's changed again, I've been imprisoned for so long, and the year name has changed again. This Tioni was not so terrifying. More than 40 years ago, he was thrown by Yorokodaki Sakanji into the Fujishi mountain. Since then, he has hated the breath of water and killed more than a dozen disciples of Lintaki. In the plot, he even ate Makomo and Sabido successively. It's a pity, he has ushered in the end. 3. 2. Beidou broke into his attack range as if stunned. The next second, he suddenly pulled out the Nishiran blades. In an instant, endless sword pressure rolled towards Tioni. 1. 0. Ding. Congratulations to the host, the sign-in is successful. Mission reward. Huang He Chi Sheng, the four souls are full. Before the words finished, Beto opened his eyes again, shining with endless brilliance. And that Tioni also froze in place. No, it's impossible. How could I? Jian Guang slashed down one after another, no matter how many arms Tioni had, they were all crushed into scum, and there was no possibility of resurrection. Until finally, that huge head fell down. It symbolized the end of his life. Die, Nishiran blades sheathed, Tioni was gone. Under the moonlight, Beto let out a long sigh of relief, feeling the continuous flow of monster power from his body. At the same time, countless new knowledge and experiences flashed in his mind. The last time he was rewarded, he got the perfect Seshomaru template, but this time he got the full value of the four souls directly for the sign-in task. That is, shortage, harmony, wonder, luck. The wild soul, the surplus of the strong, the anger of the ego. Harmonious soul, ruthless implementation, feelings hidden under coldness. Strange soul, the persistence of caring, the exploration of curious things. The soul of happiness, the consciousness of pity, the soul guided by the knife of healing. In the world of Inuyasha, human beings, animals, and vegetation all have four souls, and the jade that symbolizes the peak power of the four souls is the four-soul jade. According to legend, this jade can endow monsters with powerful abilities, and can also destroy demons, and is chased by the world. After reaching the full value of the four souls, Beto has already possessed an unspeakably powerful power, and his demon power has also expanded to the extreme. But Beto also discovered that the full value of the four souls does not represent the ultimate externalized power, but requires the cooperation of moves. And the weapons that channel power. Iron broken teeth, natural teeth, cluster cloud teeth. And Seshamaru's own knife, Bakushaya. Beto needs a weapon that can truly harness the demon power, not just a normal Nishiran blades. Otherwise, the end will be the same as that wooden knife. Can't bear the terrifying sword pressure. When his swordsmanship reaches the extreme, he will be able to release the true power of the four souls and unlock all the moves of Seshomaru, not just relying on the sword to fight. For now, there are still more secrets waiting for him to explore. When Beidou felt the power, the previous swordsman who was caught by Tioni also crawled in front of him. I saw shock written all over his face, and he bowed respectfully. I, my name is Kakino Kusanagi. Thank you for your life-saving grace. Facing the enthusiasm of the rescued person, Beidou nodded slightly. However, in his mind, the name Kakino Kwangjin flashed past. In the original plot, Kakino Masaki was just an ordinary member of the ghost-slaying team, but in a certain ghost hunting operation, he met Shinazugawa Sanemi who was still fighting ghosts with bare hands. So Kwong Jin brought Shimi to the ghost killing squad and helped him become an official ghost slaying swordsman. The friendship between the two was very deep. 
However, in the battle with the former Kazuruchi, although Shimi and Kuangjin worked together to kill him, Kuangjin died unfortunately, and Shimi became a pillar of wind. This also made Shinazugawa Sanemi speak rudely to Ubuyashiki Kagaya at the Zuhei meeting, which disappeared after some mediation. Beidou didn't expect to meet him here. Seeing that Beidou was silent, Guano Kuangjin was in awe, and left after asking for his warmth again. Makomo also came over, his brows gradually relaxed. Beidou, are you okay? She checked it carefully, and after confirming that Beidou was not injured, she let out a long sigh of relief and patted her heaving chest. From Makomo's blue eyes, there is concern for him. Beidou smiled, and purposely waved his arms to prove that he was fine. Makomo nodded in relief. It's still early, let's find a place to rest. Okay. Hearing Beidou's arrangement, Makomo nodded in agreement without thinking, as if she trusted all Beidou's decisions. Unexpectedly, the two of them hadn't walked a few steps, and the system notification sounded again in Beidou's mind. Ding, a new check-in task is released. Please ask the host to reach the peak of Fujishi Mountain within a week. After selecting the ball steel, you will receive system rewards. Ball steel, a mineral. Gorilla Crimson Sand Iron and Gorilla Crimson Ore, which absorb sunlight, are the main materials for crafting Nishiran blades. Nishiran blades, also known as color-changing knives made of spherical steel, will change color according to the owner, reflecting the owner's suitable breath. Water is called blue, thunder is called gold, fire is called red, wind is called green, rocks are called gray. And Tanjiru's black knife in the original book. Every member of the ghost killing team will be awarded Nishiran blades and team uniforms after officially joining the team, and will be bound to an exclusive sword forger at the same time. All the sword forgers live in the sword forging village, and most of the Nishiran blades of the column level are made by the village chief Tetsuji Kawara. According to the prompt of the system, Beidou needs to climb to the top of MT. Fujishi within the specified time and choose the ball steel that suits him. But since this task is related to ball steel, does it mean that there is something special in the ball steel this time? Thinking of this, Beidou smiled. As he left, he took a deep look at the woods behind him, and Makomo muttered softly. What's the matter Beidou, have you found a ghost again? It's okay, let's go. It is good. After the figures of the two finally disappeared, a pair of eyes emerged from the gap in the woods, and it turned out to be a snake. The snake was white all over and spit out bright red letters, as if it had been here for a long time. These two are the swordsmen from Mount Sagiri. It's just, could it be him? Outside the Vine Attack Mountain, the headquarters of the Ghost Slayer Squad. The moonlight falls in the courtyard, and Ubuyashiki Kagaya is listening to the report of Yenju Rengoku Shinjiro. Behind him stands the sound column Uzui Tengen. Judging by the dusty appearance of the two, it seems that they have just returned to the headquarters of the ghost killing squad, and they have been investigating Mount Sagiri for a long time. As Meikajiro told, Ubuyashiki Kagaya nodded frequently. But when he mentioned something, Ji Yu Jing Wubo's face couldn't help but move slightly, you mean. Just the unintentional release of sword energy directly crushed a temple, and there is still a ghost smell on the scene. Yes, my lord, Rengoku Shinjiro frowned, with a shameful expression on his face. At first I thought it was just a swordsman with superb swordsmanship, but after seeing the collapsed temple, I realized that I was wrong. He let out a long sigh, and said in a deep voice, that man's swordsmanship has surpassed what ordinary people can achieve, and he has broken through to a higher level. Ubuyashiki Kagaya nodded slightly, and his face became serious. Meikajiro kun, according to your opinion, is this person a swordsman who uses breathing techniques? Has Master Rinaki provided any information? Faced with Ubuyashiki's question, Rengoku Shinjiro had a hard time. After a battle between heaven and man, he gave the answer a little unconfidently. My lord, I don't think it's the method of breathing. Oh, hearing Rengoku Shinjiro stuttering, Uzui Tengen behind him took over the words. My lord, if it's the breathing method, it won't last for a long time, but every sword mark left by that person is filled with an unknown force. Master Lintaki can't tell. I see. Ubuyashiki Kagaya hummed, and it could be seen that he was also a little puzzled. Thank you, I know this matter well. To lighten the mood, Ubuyashiki brought up an interesting fact he had just learned. According to the information from Iguro Obanai, there are several good ghost hunters in this final selection. 
one of them even single-handedly killed the Tioni captured by Master Rinaki. It's amazing. Tioni. Rengoku Shinjiro was startled, is that the hundred-handed ghost that has survived for many years? Ubuyashiki Kagaya nodded with a serious expression. I've sent Eguro Obanai to check it out and, if it's appropriate, to take the ghost hunter straight to headquarters. After listening to Ubuyashiki's words, Yenju and Yinju looked at each other, and they both saw shock in each other's eyes. The last person who got such a high evaluation from Ubuyashiki Kagaya was Himahima Kume. That is the current rock pillar. Because the nine pillars are updated too quickly, the strength of the nine pillars sometimes varies too much, which can be described as mixed. But there is no doubt that no matter how you compare, the current Yenju Himahima Kume is the strongest person. And the most important point is that despite Ubuyushiki Kagaya's weak body, his will is unprecedentedly firm. Since he said this, it proves that he has absolute confidence in that person. This ghost hunter, I'm afraid it's not easy. Makajiro kun, Tengen kun, let's wait and see what happens. Trust Eguro Obanai will have good news. Yan Zhu and Yin Zhu nodded at the same time and bowed slightly. Yes, my lord. Dot dot dot. Seven days later, the vines attack the top of the mountain. Under the coquettish wisteria tree, there is a building similar to an altar, and the two children who preach the rules before are waiting. Who, who, with the sound of heavy breathing, a swordsman covered in bruises climbed up the mountain. Observe carefully, apart from the bloody wounds on his body, his left thigh is also exposed with white bones, and he is in extremely poor condition. On the altar, Ubuyashiki Korea blinked, and immediately asked Tu Yin to bandage him. Soon, two more swordsmen climbed to the top. They also lack arms and legs. I am afraid that even if they pass this final selection, it will be difficult for them to fight ghosts. Seeing this picture, Korea couldn't help frowning. Because of his young age and the fact that the Ubuyashiki clan has always been weak, he has been hidden by Kagaya in the headquarters of the Demon Slayer squad in the past, and only studied theoretically. This is Korea's first time on the scene. He was a little worried that if all the passers were seriously injured, then the final selection would be meaningless. Just when he was worried, another swordsman came. Um, finally, seeing that the swordsman was almost intact, Korea let out a sigh of relief. He recalled that in the list, the name of this person was Kino Kwangjin. Fortunately, fortunately, there is one person who can fight. And those wounded swordsmen also showed surprise eyes when they saw K. Yi Kwang approaching. How is this man barely hurt? Which line of swordsman is he? He must be hiding. His name seems to be Kakino. Hearing everyone talking about himself, Kakino scratched his head in embarrassment and limped towards the altar. Including his words, a total of four swordsmen passed the trial. Korea nodded slightly, and when he was about to let them choose the ball steel, Kwang Jin stopped him. Please wait a moment, there are two people behind. And also, Korea was startled, and looked at the mountain road suspiciously. Just as Kakino Kuwasaki said, two leisurely figures walked in his field of vision. The reason why I say this is because the couple has no tension at all, and their bodies are also spotless. It seems to be a young couple who came to climb the mountain. Look, here they come. Kwong Jin's life immediately caught the attention of the swordsman. There is no doubt that this couple is Beido and Makomo. How is this going? It's outrageous that Katsuno Kusanagi was nearly uninjured. How come the two of them are like coming to play, they can't even see a trace of blood on their bodies. All the people present were shocked and froze in place. Korea also opened his eyes wide, but soon, his expression became excited, and he couldn't help mumbling. This person, on the other side, feeling everyone's gaze, Makomo blushed, Beido, why are they looking at us? Is there something on my face? Beto smiled faintly, and took her little hand, little sister, walk slowly. Um, Makomo nodded shyly and remained silent. Because there is no food in the vine attack mountain, Makomo is dizzy from hunger and a little unsteady, so Beto needs to pull her away. Soon, the two walked to the center of the altar. Hello, can I start choosing ball steel? Your name is... Beto, Ubuyashiki Korea nodded, and respectfully guided Beto and Makomo to the altar. Please follow me. Observing his cautious attitude, no one dared to refute or speak out, because everyone was in awe of the strong and understood that this was the treatment Beidou deserved. After everyone stood up, 
several yin also brought packages containing ball steel and spread them in front of everyone. Those were ores the size of fists. These steel balls absorb sunlight, and each piece contains hot energy, and the Nishiran blades made of it have a miraculous effect on ghosts. However, due to the scarcity of the quantity, ball steel is generally only used to make weapons. When they saw these steel balls, the eyes of the four ghost slayer swordsmen shone with passion and longing, which meant that they had passed the final selection and became regular players. And will have their own Nishiran blades. Becoming a member of the ghost killing team is not only an honor, but also a symbol of their ability to avenge their dead relatives. Save the people from the fire and water. Sensing the excited emotions of the swordsmen, Korea also nodded and extended her hand at the same time. My lord, please. He was pointing at Beido, of course. Even though he was the last swordsman to go up the mountain, Korea invited Beido to choose the ball steel first, which is enough to show that he values it. Seeing that the others had no objection, Beido also walked forward with a smile. This time, the system sign in location was the top of Fujishi Mountain where the steel balls were stored. However, Beidou carefully noticed that this mission was completed only after the ball steel was selected, indicating that things were far from that simple. When Beidou looked at ball steel, the system notification sound came again. Ding, congratulations to the host for successfully arriving at the sign in location, and the sign in officially begins. The sign in time is one minute, and if you quit halfway, it will be regarded as a sign in failure. Soon, the familiar countdown began again, but this time the time was increased to one minute. 59, 58, 57. Just as Beidou was about to pick up a ball steel and ponder it carefully, a hand suddenly stretched out to stop it. Wait a minute. The voice was a little cold, which made people shudder. Looking up, beside the table where the ball steel is placed, there is an extra man at some point. The man is not tall, even short, with black mid-length hair, and a black and white striped feather kimono. However, what is surprising is that his eyes are green in the left and golden in the right, and half of his face is covered under the bandage. Seeing the appearance of the man, the people around were shocked. And Ubuyashiki Korea also frowned slightly, and blurted out, Mr. Iguro. There is no doubt that he is the snake pillar Iguro Obanai. Facing Korea's questioning eyes, Xiaobanai nodded and turned to look at Beidou. At the same time, there was a sound that was colder than the sound of a snake spitting out a letter. For the sake of caution, I need to check among the ghost slayer swordsmen present. Is there a ghost? As soon as these words came out, everyone was shocked. Although they don't know who Snake Zoo is for the time being, they can know that this person's status is not low just based on Korea's attitude towards him. What was even more shocking was what he said. Ghost. Are there ghosts among the ghost slayer swordsmen present? No, could it be? Almost instantly, everyone's eyes were on the same person, Beidou. In their view, only ghosts can be so powerful that they can spend seven days in the Vine Attack Mountain unscathed. If it were ordinary people, they would have already died so badly. Thinking of this, the surviving ghost slayer swordsman looked at Beidou with surprise and fear, full of suspicion. Impossible, senior, you must have made a mistake. This lord is not a ghost. It was Kakino Kwangjin who spoke, because Beidou had saved his life, so he must have unconditional trust in Beidou. Yano Kwangjin jumped out and interrupted, and everyone fell silent. Finally, Beidou smiled and said, Kwang Jin, don't panic. This Mr. Yi Hei never said that I am a ghost. The moment he heard this sentence, Kakino Kwangjin also reacted, and muttered to himself, that's right, he didn't say that adults are ghosts, so. On the other hand, Iguro Obanai also had a strange look in his eyes, thinking secretly in his heart. This young man named Beidou was completely unaffected by everyone's suspicious eyes, as if he had the confidence that everything was under control. It is really unexpected, Mr. Yihei, who is the ghost you are talking about? Sensing that the atmosphere had become silent, Korea couldn't help asking questions, barely standing still. Although he is a well-trained successor of the Ubuyashiki clan, he is still a child after all, and he is inevitably a little flustered. Hearing the question, Iguro Obanai nodded. In the next second, he quickly walked past Beidou and walked straight in front of Kakino Kwangjin. Previous, Senior, Kei Kwangjin shivered, beads of sweat appeared on his forehead, you don't think I'm a ghost, how could I? Hiss, just at the very moment, 
a white snake flew out from Igiro Obanai's sleeve and opened its teeth towards Kabamaru. The snake was as white as silk, but its aura should not be underestimated. Its name is Dewan, and it is Shalba's life and death partner. Ah, seeing the white snake open its bloody mouth, Kei Kuangjin retreated instinctively, with a faint urge to draw his sword. Seeing this scene, Beidou remained motionless, with a smile on his lips from beginning to end. Because he has already seen through the target of the white snake. Not Kuang Yi Kuang Nier. Hiss. In the next second, a black shadow retreated a dozen steps in an instant, narrowly avoiding the white snake's attack. Everyone followed the prestige and found that the black shadow was the first ghost slayer swordsman to go up the mountain, and also the one who was the most injured. Looking at him now, where does he look like his life is dying? It's just alive and well. It was actually seen through. The swordsman grinned, and a few sharp teeth grew out. He was obviously an ogre. Seeing this scene, everyone was stunned. Immediately, there was another wave of fear, because they were chatting and laughing with this person just now, but they didn't expect the ghost to lurk in the crowd. Igiro Obanai fixed his gaze, and silently pulled out the Nishiran blades. It turned out that he had noticed this ghost secretly when the vine attacked the mountain, and had been waiting for the opportunity. On the other side, Makomo also subconsciously held Beidou's hand. Beidou, ghosts can pretend to be humans. For her surprise, Beidou didn't take it seriously, because he had already seen the flaw. At the same time, the system notification tone also ushered in the end. 3, 2, 1, Beidou's mind moved, and he suddenly felt an inexplicable suction coming from the ball steel on the stage. Is it really? Zero. Ding, congratulations to the host, the sign-in is successful. Mission reward, fierce sun ball steel. Hearing the system's notification tone, Beidou was immediately refreshed. He took a deep breath, stretched out his hand without hesitation and touched the ball steel in front of him, and soon he felt a bumpy touch from his fingertips. This is the raw material of Nishiran blades. But Beidou knows in his heart that there is no difference between the steel balls. Because of the different locations, the concentration and hardness of the absorbed sunlight are also very different. And a good ball steel in the hands of a skilled knife forger will create a more powerful Nishiran blades. Even better fit with Pranayama. Just as Beidou was feeling the warmth from Nishiran blades, an inexplicable light came into his eyes, making him frown slightly. Immediately afterwards, the vision in front of him changed. Darkness, endless darkness. A gust of cold wind blows, Beidou seems to be in the extremely cold place in the north of the world, even breathing is cold. In this vast and lonely land, there is no life. Suddenly, the clouds and the sky cracked, and a bright light fell. Like a galloping dragon looking straight at the world. I saw that the dragon's whole body was shining fiery red, and its eyes were like two scorching suns, descending to the mortal world with the momentum of a king's landing. What made Beidou even more dazed was that, somewhere, he found that the giant dragon seemed to be watching him. What happened? It, who is it? Soon, the mysterious vision disappeared, and when Beidou opened his eyes again, he returned to the top of Vine Attack Mountain. He couldn't help but picked up the steel ball, and looked carefully. There is a faint layer of gold on the surface of this spherical steel, but it is too late now, if the sun shines on it. Maybe sparks will be thrown. And on Liang Ball Steel, Beidou also felt an inexplicable familiarity. It seems that the giant dragon lives in the ball steel. Like the sun breathing, the Nishiran blades made of this piece of sun ball steel must have extraordinary power, born to fight ghosts. Beidou nodded slightly, and looked back at Ubuyashiki Korea, it's decided to be it. This one, Korea's eyes were fixed, and he found that the steel ball in Beidou's hand was black in appearance, as if it was no different from other steel balls. He nodded and recorded Beidou's choice. And Makomo and others also selected the ball steel, waiting for a few days later the masters of the knife forging village will come to deliver the knife. Just after everyone finished choosing, one person stopped Beidou. Trouble, this gentleman, please wait a moment. Following the voice, it was Igiro Obanai who was speaking, and the dysprosium pill was still wrapped around his neck. Hiss, seeing the white snake spit out the snake letter, Makomo frowned instinctively and grabbed Beidou's sleeve. Fortunately, Beidou knew that Snake Zoo didn't have any malicious intentions. He just said that there were ghosts in the team and it wasn't aimed at him, it was just a small temptation. Can I help you? 
Igiro Obanai nodded, and said in a low voice, According to my lord's order, please return to the headquarters within seven days. Headquarters. When hearing this word, Korea on the side subconsciously stared, and soon thought of something. It seems that my father has noticed Beidou for a long time. He silently looked at Beidou, already memorizing this childish face by heart. I understand. Say hello to the lord for me. Beidou nodded slightly, and without staying too long, he dragged Makomo down the mountain. While Igiro Obanai has no animosity toward him, that doesn't mean Beidou doesn't have a temper. But Beidou still remembered that there was a white snake watching him in the vine attack mountain. Feeling Beidou's alienation, Igiro Obanai narrowed his eyes, his temperament was no different from Kabamaru, which made people shudder. And the other ghost-slaying swordsmen also went down the mountain one after another. Only one swordsman was firmly locked up by Kabamaru, and that was the inner ghost, who was picked out by Igiro Obanai just now. This guy definitely did not come to Fuji Attack Mountain by accident. It must have been instructed by someone. Thinking of this, Shizu glanced at him coldly. Bring him back, my lord has something to ask. Yes. Several yin nodded, and tied up the ghost with torture instruments soaked in wisteria flower juice, making him unable to move any more. Korea and Barney at the side nodded, and also went up and down the mountain. Soon, Beidou returned to Mount Sagiri with Makomo. Compared with the last time I left, the fog on Mount Sagiri seems to be thicker, but no matter how I look at it, I feel familiar and warm. After all, this is their home. And accompanied by Master Lintaki. But when they arrived at the cabin in the deep mountains, they found that there was no one inside. Beidou, where do you think Master will go? Makomo frowned, feeling a little uneasy. Ever since she saw the scene of ghosts eating people in the Vine Attack Mountain, a shadow has been buried in her heart, and she hasn't recovered yet. But Beidou believes that with more fights, sooner or later Makomo will accept and strengthen himself. Just as the two were talking, there was a click in their ears. Looking back, an old man wearing a red Tengu mask walked up the mountain road not far away. At his feet was a firewood he had accidentally thrown away. Makomo, Beidou, you. Just come back. Yurokodaki Sakanji's voice was a little trembling, and he hugged the two of them in disbelief, with two lines of tears running down his cheeks. Feeling his excitement, Beidou's eyes gradually softened. In the past ten years, Tioni threw him into Fujishishin in order to avenge Master Rinaki, and killed more than a dozen swordsmen from the Shueyu lineage. It can be said that none of the swordsmen under Master Rinaki passed the final selection all these years, which has almost become his nightmare. Fortunately, this nightmare was finally punctured by Beidou. It's good to be back, it's good to be back. For a few days, Beidou continued to practice in Mount Sagiri, and from time to time he would go down the mountain to fight some wild beasts. After some recuperation and familiarization, the monster power in his body has also been consolidated. Compared with when he attacked the mountain, both his accuracy and control have improved again. Beidou had a premonition in his heart that he was about to break through a certain realm. Until one day, an old man wearing a bamboo hat broke the peaceful life. The first to spot him was Makomo. Since the final selection, she and Beidou have lived a small life in the mountains, enjoying a leisurely pastoral life. Beidou, an old man came down from the mountain, he seems to be looking for Master Lintaki. Hearing Makomo's excited voice, Beidou smiled slightly. Because he already guessed where that person came from, he said, let's go, let's welcome this distinguished guest for master. Distinguished guest, Makomo blinked his eyes and followed behind with a vague understanding. Not long after, the figures of the two came to the foot of the mountain, and the old man wearing a hat who was walking on Mount Sagiri also raised his head. Looking at Beidou and Makomo from a distance, the old man nodded with a smile. This guy Lin Taki has a very stubborn temper, and he hasn't married a wife in his old age. However, the disciples accepted are in pairs. This bamboo hat is short in stature, and it is a standard yordle in the game. He is wearing a black striped linen suit and has white hair that reaches his shoulders. What is even more surprising is the mask worn by the old man. In stark contrast to his immortal demeanor, the mask he wears is white and yellow in color, with two holes in his nose, and his mouth is tilted to one side and raised high. The degree of crookedness is even more outrageous than dazzling. This is the famous Vulcan mask in the island country. 
It has a very weird and funny shape. It is often used in traditional festivals. The work of people wearing this mask is often related to stoves. Just at this time, Beto and Makomo, a couple of immortals, came down the mountain and cupped their hands at the old man. The moment he saw this image, Beto knew it. But there was a look of surprise in his eyes. There is no doubt that this old man with a bamboo hat is from Forging Sword Village, but it is not the iron tomb in the original plot, but... Meet the village chief. Oh, hearing Beto's name, the old man's face under the mask couldn't help but raise his eyebrows. You have very good eyesight, kid. As Beto said, this unattractive little old man turned out to be the village chief of Forging Knife Village, Tidy Heyu in Tiejun. As the head of the village, he is also the leader in forging sword skills in the entire village. He has always been only responsible for making Nishiran blades for the pillars. Now that he has taken over the task of the Iron Tomb, does that mean? Trouble the village head to send the knife. Beto was delighted quietly, because he had noticed that there were two Nishiran blades on the back of Tetsu Kawara Tiejun. Even though there was a distance, Beto could clearly feel the scorching breath from one of them. Even the surrounding air is gradually warming up. Tidy Heyu and Tiejun smiled, nodded and said, That's right, you're much smarter than that guy, Lintaki. Come, eat Karinto. As the old village chief spoke, he took out a small package and handed it to Beto, with love and appreciation in his eyes. Beto took it after thanking him, and the relationship between the two became closer. Sure enough, Tidy Heyu and Tiejun is more approachable than expected, and he has no heirs as a village head at all. More of this is because the old village chief values Beto. At the same time, he is also the forger of Beto. As expected of the person chosen by Liang Ball Steel, boy, please don't let down Lord Vulcan's kindness. Thank you, village chief. Doubts arose in Beto's heart, but he remained calm on the surface. It seemed that the galloping fire dragon in his memory was the legendary Vulcan. Here, grab your Nishiran blades. And this little girl. Tiejun Kawahara took off his bamboo hat and carefully removed two Nishiran blades from behind, especially respectful when facing one of them. He couldn't help letting out a long sigh when he touched the Nishiran blades. What a nice knife. You are Beidou, right? If you don't mind, can you open it and have a look? Taiki Heyu and Tiejun looked at Beidou with a smile, and at the same time gave him the cup with both hands. Hearing this, Beidou's mind moved slightly. He unhurriedly lifted the sackcloth wrapping Nishiran blades, and in the next second, a golden light flashed. This, this is. Feeling the rapid heating up in front of him, Makomo's pretty face also flushed, and her cheeks became hot. The Nishiran blades in Beidou's hands have a black gold background, only the edge of the blade is glowing red, as if it is shining with the sun high in the sky, which is awe-inspiring. The blade is the rising sun, and the color is pure gold. It's such a good knife. It's a color I've never seen in my life. It can make such a masterpiece. The old man has no regrets in this life. After seeing the whole picture of Nishiran blades, Tetsukawa Tetsujin lost control of his emotions for a while, and his small body was trembling. If you look closely, there are still tears rolling in his eyes. Don't think he is performing because a master like him has always regarded forging knives as something more important than life. Now, Beidou made his dream come true. Facing the old village chief's smile and words, Beidou clenched his fists. Thank you, village chief. It's okay, the old man can see that only such a work of art can be worthy of you. Tidy Heyu and Tiejun's eyes don't seem to be fake, they are completely sincere. He has built Nishiran blades for too many pillars over the decades, including the rock pillar Himahima Kume. However, this is the first time I have seen a person like Beidou who is naturally compatible with Nishiran blades and recognized by Lord Vulcan. Beidou, if you need anything in the future, it's okay to say so. Hearing the old village chief's assurance, Beidou's eyes suddenly lit up. Village chief, I do have two things to ask you. Um, the old village had narrowed his eyes and smiled, what? Village chief, I want to learn how to forge knives. Heyu and Tiejun felt the sincerity in Beidou's tone, so he nodded, what else? I want to observe and visit Forging Knife Village. Beidou knew in his heart that there were not only Nishiran blades in Forging Sword Village, but also another big killer. A doll left behind by the swordsman Sui Kunichi of Breath of the Sun. Fate 1-0 style. Tidy Heyu and Tiejun nodded slightly, 
and said with a smile, these two things are not a big deal, but I want to learn the real skill of forging knives. Please tell the village chief. The old village chief was even more pleased to see Beto appearing arrogant, but polite. It's actually not difficult. Everyone in our sword forging village has forged swords since childhood, but if you want to learn more advanced skills, you need to pass the exam set by the village elders to judge whether you are suitable for forging swords. Beto smiled lightly, without any hesitation. Then I will thank the old village chief first. Beto didn't have the slightest worry about the test that Tiajun Heyuan said. With his powerful sword pressure and demon power, he was able to forge a hundred times more meticulously than ordinary people. Um, the old village head nodded. The second thing, I need to ask the leader of this generation, Ubuyashiki Kagaya, although you are already an official team member, you can't just walk around the forging sword village. Generally speaking, only team members who have accepted special missions or are at the zoo level can go to Forging Sword Village, but if it's you, it shouldn't be a worry. After listening to Tidy Heyu and Tiajun's delicate narration, Beto also gradually remembered some plots. In the original book, Forging Knife Village and Butterfly House are two important venues for the ghost-killing team. Once discovered and invaded by ghosts, it means that the secrets will be exposed. Therefore, these two places have been military important places since ancient times. It is good that the Butterfly House is at the headquarters, but if you want to go to Forging Sword Village, you have to go through a series of cumbersome procedures. Even when Tanjiro went there, his senses were sealed off, and he was, consigned, by the yin's like solitaire. Then please ask the village chief. Ha ha, you kid is really slippery. The notification from Taidi Kawara Tiajun is virtually equivalent to recommending Beidou to Ubuyashiki. How could Kagaya disagree with his EQ? Just at this moment, a familiar greeting sounded from behind. It turned out to be the village chief, why did you come here suddenly? Everyone followed the reputation, and it was Yurokodaki Sakanji who spoke, holding the freshly cut firewood in his hand. Seeing his somewhat surprised expression, he probably didn't expect T.T. Heyu and Tiajun to make a trip in person. Ha ha, you fool, you are still the same. In terms of age, the old village head is considered to be of the uncle's generation, so he speaks in the tone of an elder. The village chief hasn't changed much. Master Rinaki gave a rare smile, and the atmosphere became harmonious. And Beido and Makomo also looked at each other and smiled, and couldn't help laughing. This was the first time for them to see Master Rinaki, who was always serious and dull, like a child. At the same time, a reminder sounded in Beidou's mind. But this time it's not a battlefield. It's at the headquarters of the Ghost Slayer Squad. Ding, a new check in task is released. Please ask the host to arrive at the headquarters of the Ghost Killing Squad within a week, accept the test set by Ubuyashiki Kagaya, and you will receive system rewards. Oh, hearing the task of the system, Beidou was suddenly full of thoughts. In the original book, Ubuyashiki's character has always been calm. Even when he encountered a fight between Shinazugawa Sanemi and Tanjiro, he didn't get angry because of it, and he quickly reconciled the conflict. If ordinary people mentioned the ghost-killing squad, they would think that the boss is a strong and domineering person, and they would never guess. A weak body like Kagaya. Now that Ubuyashiki is going to test himself, has he noticed what happened that night? Beido didn't think any more but took the Nishiran blades and headed to the rear of Mount Sagiri. He already felt the knife trembling, as if. What to convey to yourself? Watching Beidou go away, Makomo tilted his head suspiciously, and Tetsuchi Kawara Tiajun was also chatting with Rinaki. Soon, Beidou came to the former abandoned temple. He glanced at it casually, and saw a few shallow footprints on the ground, someone should have been here, and deliberately covered up the traces. But with Beidou's meticulous observation ability, he easily judged the identities of these people. Column, and at least three. Sure enough, Ubuyashiki also guessed something. Thinking of that sick figure, Beidou suddenly looked forward to meeting Ubuyashiki. But Beidou also understands that Ubuyashiki should be busy with other things now, interrogating the ghost who tried to sneak into the ghost-killing team. In order to climb the vine to attack the mountain, the ogre hollowed out a swordsman who participated in the final selection beforehand, and hid in the human skin to cover up his aura as a ghost. At the same time, he also escaped from the wisteria forest. But he was secretive after all, 
and the rotten smell on his body was detected by Beto and Snake Zoo, and he was still doomed. It's just, who the hell came up with this note? Send a fool to the ghost killing squad. There was a smile on the corner of Beto's mouth, this kind of thing is not Kibutsuji Muzan's style, it must be instigated by other ghosts. Fortunately, he doesn't need to delve into these matters. Buzz, feeling the trembling of Nishiran blades, Beidou's eyes flashed. This knife forged by the old village head seems to contain a powerful scorching aura. Unlike normal Nishiran blades which only absorb a portion of the sun's power, the piece of solar ball steel seems to be imbued with pure fire and light. Fire can burn the cells of ghosts, causing them to sink and perish. Light is self-evident, it is completely the nemesis of ghosts. The combination of these two powerful forces shows the power of the Nishiran blades. Beidou suppressed the excitement in his heart, and observed carefully again. He found four large characters engraved on the blade. Destroy the ghost, kill, in the dark, these four characters were flashing red and gold respectively. As Beidou grips the Nishiran blades, a unique color comes into view. The white light that symbolizes the demon power of Seshomaru. The red light that symbolizes Vulcan. A powerful sword pressure surged out, and Beidou also closed his eyes. He entered that unknown world again. Buzz. In the empty darkness, Beidou opened his eyes. At this moment, he only felt that his mind was in a mess, as if some kind of creature was entrenched and screaming. At a certain moment, Beidou suddenly raised his head. In the thick clouds, there was a huge figure hovering endlessly, and the scorching breath came one after another. It's that flame-breathing dragon again. Beidou immediately recognized that it was the existence in Liang Ball Steel, and it was also the embodiment of Vulcan's will. It's a pity that this time, the giant dragon didn't stay too long. Instead, he roared directly at him and opened his bloody mouth. After a short thought, Beidou understood its intention, is this also a test for me? Roar, feeling the pressure on his face, Beidou frowned into a word of Sichuan, and at the same time his body tensed up. Soon, through the mottled clouds, he saw the true face of the fire dragon for the first time. Apart from the two eyes that looked like the sun, his body was as tall as a mountain, and every dragon scale was filled with gold. The two dragon horns are even more majestic. Give people endless pressure. Facing this menacing fire dragon, Beidou clenched his teeth and did not give in at all. The next second, he suddenly clenched his fists. A Taedao completely formed by the condensed demon power appeared in Beidou's palm. Kill, as Beidou slashed downwards, the pressure of the sword came suddenly, directly approaching the fire dragon. This is the strongest demon power he has ever released. The result can be imagined. I saw that the fire dragon that was still showing off its power just now, the flames covering its whole body were scattered by the light of the knife, and it itself felt as if it had been struck by lightning. Immediately afterwards, it fell downward like a meteorite. Successful, seeing this scene, Beidou's eyes lit up. In fact, when he saw the fire dragon for the first time, he realized the problem, this is not the real entity of Vulcan, but his remaining will in the world. What's more, this fire dragon seems to be arrogant, but in fact most of its power comes from the ball steel, and there is no capital to compete with Beidou. Soon, Beidou silently walked towards the fire dragon. Feeling the pressure of the powerful sword, Huolong opened his crystal clear eyes and asked of vicissitudes of life and simplicity. Are you the one chosen by Lord Vulcan? It really doesn't look like a mediocre person. Hearing the praise in its mouth, Beidou smiled faintly. Under Beidou's gaze, the fire dragon slowly got up, and the huge body like a mountain came into view, and suddenly clouds and mist formed. It gazes at Beidou, as if imagining a work of art. After a long time, he finally nodded in approval. In that case, from today onwards, I will recognize you as the Lord. Stay in this sword. The sound was deafening, no less than the momentum of landslides and ground cracks. In the endless darkness, the fire dragon suddenly burst into a dragon roar, turning into stars. When Beidou opened his eyes again, in front of him, there's already an extra pair of flaming Nishiran blades. Here lives the soul of the fire dragon. There was firmness in Beidou's brows, he held the handle of the knife tightly, and an unknown force rushed through his veins. Gradually began a long tempering. A few days passed, and it was time for Beidou to go down the mountain. He was about to go to the headquarters of the Ghost Slayer Squad to make an appointment with Ubuyashiki Kagaya. Before leaving, 
Beto and Makomo bid farewell. And after he left, two more uninvited guests came to Mount Sagiri's feet. Upon careful observation, one of the teenagers turned out to have flesh-colored hair, and there was a frightening scar on his right cheek. But his eyes are very gentle, especially when he is talking. Giyu, there is Mount Sagiri ahead. Sabido, me, can I really become a ghost swordsman? The one who spoke was a boy about his age, with long black hair and a youthful face. Facing the boy's timidity, the companion named Sabido immediately frowned, it's already here, don't you want to go back? No, that's not what it means. I'm just, after all, the black hair was a little unconfident, and his face was full of fear, as if he had experienced some painful memories before. Seeing him still like this, Sabido sighed helplessly. Giyu, have you forgotten how your sister died? Didn't you keep saying that you would avenge her? Facing Sabido's fierce words, the black-haired boy finally nodded, and tears welled up in the corners of his eyes. I, I haven't forgotten. Then why are you still refusing to face reality? I just think, the black-haired boy lowered his brows and his voice was as thin as a mosquito, I might as well die at that time. The next second, Sabido suddenly raised his hand. Snapped. After the crisp slap, Tomioka Giyu stared blankly, covering the extra slap marks on his face. And in front of him, is Sabido's expression of hating iron and steel. It's better to die by yourself, don't tell me a second time. If there is another time, I will stop here with you. Break off. Tomioka Giyu lowered his head and clenched his hands into fists. After a long time, the voice of unwillingness came. I see, let's go. Well, we'll see Master Rinaki soon. Just as the two newcomers boarded Mount Sagiri, Beto also arrived at the destination according to the guidance of the crow. Quack, Beto, give the order now. Immediately go to the training ground to gather and participate in special training. In Beto's field of vision, a black crow flapped its wings, and a hoarse sound came from its beak. This is the communication tool used by the ghost killing squad to deliver orders. Crow. For the Ubuyashiki family, these countless crows have another name, that is, the eyes of crows. With these quick-moving and nimble spies, the ghost-killing squad doesn't have to worry about intelligence at all, so they can easily track down the traces of ogres. Regarding the crow's words, Beto nodded with a smile. He had vaguely guessed the intention of the ghost slayer squad, but he didn't point it out. As Beto walked further, the road became wider, and there were sounds of fighting and shouting at the end of the woods. No, just go faster. Too slow, too slow. You will be killed by ghosts like this. After passing through the woods, Beto stopped at the foot of a barren mountain. Not far away, a group of swordsmen in black uniforms were gathered for training, sweating profusely. Coincidentally, there was an acquaintance inside. Master Beto, here, the one who was waving to him was Kakino Kwangjin, and Beto nodded slightly and walked towards him. Seeing him coming, Kwang Jin seemed very excited. Master Beidou, have you also received Mr. Gotu's order? Gotu. Beidou thought for a moment, then shook his head. Didn't Ubuyashiki Kagaya ask them to come here? Not Mr. Gotu, that would be. Hey, you two, stop whispering. Just when Kwang Jin was about to complain again, a stern faced swordsman walked over, the whites of his eyes were bigger than the pupils, making one feel a little empty. Hearing this voice, Kakino Kwangjin immediately shivered. He immediately stood up and raised his hands. Yes, Mr. Gotu. Um, this dead fish-eyed swordsman was Gotu. He noticed Beidou beside him, but there was a trace of doubt in his eyes. After a while, he nodded and said, Don't waste time, join the team quickly. Seeing Gotu finally turned and left, Kwangjin let out a long sigh of relief. Master Beidou, let's go too. There is a high platform in the center of the training ground. At this moment, the audience is already surrounded by ghost-slaying swordsmen. However, except for Beidou and Kuang Jin, they are all previous ghost hunters. There are no other newcomers. Okay, now that everyone is here, I will briefly introduce the second stage of the complete concentration breathing method. All concentration Changzhong. The person who spoke on the stage was none other than dead fish I go to. The so-called Quanjong Changzhong refers to the deeper level of further study and comprehension based on the condition of proficient use of the Quanjong breathing method, and it is also the minimum condition for approaching the strength of the column. 
After reaching Changzhong, you can continue to concentrate even when you fall asleep, and you can quickly improve your combat power. In the plot, the three of Tanjiro went to Butterfly House for regular training after returning from Nation Spider Mountain. While Gotu was teaching, Beidou silently observed the faces of the people around him, and found that most of them were veteran members of the Ghost Slayer squad, and a few of them even died. It seems that they have already reached the qualifications to comprehend Changzhong. The reason why Ubuyashiki Kagaya asked himself and Kuang Jin to attend the lectures was that he was very optimistic about the two of them, and wanted them to join the Ghost Slayer team as soon as possible. But, does this count as counterproductive? As the time passed by, Gotu carefully explained the basic conditions in the advanced routine, and used his previous achievements as examples from time to time. From his experience, it can be judged that Gotu is already an extraordinary swordsman, and he is only two levels away from the pillar. With Gotu's qualifications and experience, it is more than sufficient as a teacher. The team members in the audience nodded with a vague understanding, and Beidou also learned from the loopholes in nutritional supplement knowledge. Just when Gotu reached a critical point, the voice stopped abruptly. Then his eyes swept to the audience. Is there any team member willing to come to the stage and give me a demonstration? As soon as these words came out, several veteran players raised their hands. However, Gotu's eyes finally fell on the back of the crowd. Beto, are you interested in giving it a try? The moment the swordsmen heard the name, they were suddenly puzzled, and quickly remembered where they had heard the rumor about Beto. It was the man who had survived for seven days in the Rattan Mountain without a trace of blood on his body. It is said that he has a younger sister. Why does such a winner in life still come to the ghost-killing squad? It is good. Facing Gotu's scrutinizing gaze, Beidou responded. For him, Gotu's challenge is not worth mentioning at all, but what Beidou wants to see is Changzhou. Seeing Beidou walk on stage, Kuang Jin finally came to his senses. He frowned tightly, hoping in his heart that Gotu would be more lenient, since Beidou is still a rookie after all. On the other hand, those old players also showed their eyes watching the show. They want to see, whether Beidou is as strong as the legend says, or is it just an empty name? Do you use this? Beidou patted the scabbard on his waist, Gotu was taken aback for a moment. He quickly realized, it's okay, just use a real knife, and I'll finish it off. A trace of displeasure flashed across Gotu's eyebrows, obviously feeling that Beidou was provoking him. Yeah, Beidou nodded slightly, and then pulled out the Nishiran blades. His Nishiran blades are unremarkable, plain black in color. However, upon careful observation, under the reflection of the sunlight, the blade was actually glowing with a faint golden color, and there was even a dragon pattern. Very well, then I'm welcome. Gotu laughed heartily, also holding the knife with both hands. As an old man of the ghost-killing squad, he has of course heard the rumors about Beidou, and has always wanted to meet this strongest rookie. Soon, however, Gotu will pay for his curiosity. Chapter 14 Beidou nodded slightly and cheered up. He held up the Nishiran blades in both hands, staring straight ahead with a piercing gaze. Since the content of the demonstration is the complete works Changzhong, of course the swordsmanship performed by the two must also be related to the breathing method. Invisibly, dust was raised in the training. Um, finding that Beidou's aura was no weaker than his own, Gotu stared blankly, and a flash of surprise flashed in his eyes. Before coming here, Ubuyashiki explained that he must pay attention to this newcomer, and now it seems that he should not be underestimated. On the other hand, the swordsman in the audience showed suspicious eyes. How can the breathing method be released? No, it's pure aura that caused the change. I didn't expect that Mr. Gotu could reach this step. I thought only Zhu could do it. Shouldn't the focus be on Beidou? For a moment, the old players all stared round, paying special attention to this escalated challenge. Feeling everyone's burning eyes, Gotu smiled instead of anger. Beidou, be careful, clear. Before the words fell, Gotu had already swung the Nishiran blades first, and a gust of wind blew up in an instant. Surprisingly, his breathing method reveals a thick breath, and even the wind is violent and rough. This kind of attack is completely open and close. Beidou knew it well, and roughly guessed which lineage of swordsman Gotu came from, Breath of Rock. Compared with other breathing methods, the Breath of Rock emphasizes a solid foundation and thick accumulation. 
it neither has the ingenious strength of the breath of water to overcome rigidity with softness, nor the rapid burst of breath of thunder. What Yan Hu has is the momentum of Mount Tai. However, Beidou did not dodge, but raised his hand and turned out a ball of sword flowers, and the sound of running water faintly resounded. Breath of Water 2 Type Waterwheel Wow, in the next second, Gotu's attack was easily resolved. Seeing this picture, Gotu felt the pressure for the first time, but Beidou actually had another trick. The footsteps were light and silent, and in an instant, Beidou was already close to him. Water breathing, three shapes, flowing and dancing. This is an offensive and defensive move, which can make the body move at a high speed like a stream of water, and due to the speed of the action, several afterimages are often left behind wherever it passes. As a result, the team members in the audience also saw an unimaginable scene. Tear, although Gotu evaded consciously, speed was not his forte, and a corner of his clothes was eventually torn off. Gotu frowned, as if he was struggling fiercely. But soon, all his emotions turned into a wry smile, Beto, I admit that I lost. Before the words fell, those old team members finally exploded. What? Mr. Gotu surrendered. How is it possible? Did I hear wrong? If Gotu knew that he was no match for Beto, but still slapped his swollen face to pretend to be fat, and continued to bite the bullet, the result would undoubtedly be a worse loss. He admits so freely now, but it makes people feel good. After sorting out his thoughts, Gotu looked at Beto helplessly. Beto, with your strength, even if you only have the first stage, you are far better than me in Changzhong, not to mention. Having said that, Gotu gave Beto a deep look. He didn't go on, because Gotu's last sentence is, what's more, you have already glimpsed the way of Changzhong. Mr. Gotu's praise, small skill. Beto bowed to him humbly, and knew that Gotu deliberately reserved, not revealing his strength. He knew in his heart that Gotu was not trying to save face for himself. But want to keep Beidou's secret. Let Kibutsuji Muzen get the news in case someone wants to reveal it. As the saying goes, Mu Shu Yu Lin Fang will destroy it. Although it is impossible for ghosts to exist in the ghost killing team, no one can guarantee that there are no spies of Muzen. Once Kibutsuji Muzen knows that there is a genius like Beidou, maybe he will really focus on, care. But just the challenge of the two of them just now was exciting enough to shock everyone. Is this true? Even Mr. Gotu is ashamed of himself. Could it be that this newcomer has already learned the complete works of Changzhong? But isn't he just here? Do you think that Beidou is the stepson of Zhu? Stepson does not refer to heirs, but is more inclined to disciples and successors. Most of the pillars will select good seedlings among the ghost swordsmen as the key training objects, such as Suiri Kanawo as the stepson of Kocho Shinobu, Kanroji Mitsuri as the stepson of Rengoku Shinjiro. Even Rengoku Kyujiro once wanted Tanjiro to be his stepson. Once Zu died, the stepson would most likely become the new Zu as a matter of course, so as to ensure the strongest strength of the ghost killing team. The strength shown by Beidou has already surpassed the cognition of ordinary people, and the solidification of the breathing method is even more unbelievable. It's hard to believe that he's really just a rookie. Beto, if you have time, I still want to ask you for advice. Gotu scratched his head a little unconfidently, obviously he was the teacher responsible for the teaching of the Ghost Slayer squad, but he became a student in front of Beto. Regarding Gotu's request, Beto also smiled and said, I'm waiting anytime. Thanks. After all, Gotu nodded heavily. And Beto also sheathed Nishiran blades and chose to walk out of the training ground. After all, he has learned the complete concentration Changzhong. The next thing he has to do is to get familiar with it. Looking at the back of Beidou going away, Kakino Kuangjin has not turned the corner until this moment. This, this is leaving. However, looking at the entire training ground, no one questioned it. Because everyone understands that Beidou has this qualification. Even more of this strength. Soon, two days passed quietly. In this short period of time, Beidou conquered a group of ghost-slaying swordsmen with his outstanding swordsmanship and breathing techniques, and also won the recognition of the veteran players. Gotu even said bluntly, Beidou no longer needs anyone to teach him, he can be on his own. Such a high evaluation has never been achieved by anyone in the Demon Slayer squad except Zhu. Since Beidou left the training ground, he sat cross-legged in the back of the mountain every day, bathing in the mountain breeze and feeling the nature. 
In the dark, I touched the threshold of the unity of man and nature. He recalled how Yorokodaki Sakanji demonstrated water breathing and his understanding of the breathing method when he first ascended Mount Sagiri. So Beto explored on his own, and gradually comprehended the essentials of the complete works, and quickly mastered them. What surprised him even more was that when he maintained the state of full concentration and normal concentration, the Nishiran blades held in his hand also moved. It even churned out substantial flames. You must know that although the name of the breathing method contains natural elements such as fire, water, wind, and thunder, it does not really exist, but a state simulated by the energy in the swordsman's body. But the Nishiran blades in Beidou's hands released a truly pure flame. This has gone beyond the reach of the breathing method. Unfortunately, this phenomenon is not achieved every time, obviously there is still some kind of law. But Beidou believes that he will soon be able to use it freely. Finally, at the end of two days before the sign-in task, the crow flew to Beidou again. Quack, Beidou, give the order now. Immediately head to the village below the mountain to find out where the ogre is. With the new task, Beidou can finally exercise his muscles and bones. He immediately chose to go down the mountain, and when he passed the training ground, he also met the old players who were still listening to the lecture. When they saw Beidou leave the customs, many people burst into smiles. Kusano Kusakami also greeted him among them. Originally, the rumors about Beidou never stopped, and many people even had doubts, saying that the selection in Fujishishin was tricky. But since the last time, he easily defeated Gotu. All the rumors were self-defeating. For this newcomer, everyone had no other emotions except awe. As that Beidou, even smaller than expected, I heard that he is only 16 years old, is it true? Don't even think about it, a genius like Beidou is destined to be a man of zoo. The man of the pillar. You mean, ahem, please don't let Lord Kocho hear you. As everyone said, Beidou has already impressed everyone on the training ground after only a few days in the team. And his name spread throughout the ghost-killing squad. Many girls from Butterfly House even asked for leave and ran out of the ward in order to see this evildoer. On the other hand, Beidou is calm about this. Because he had expected this scene a long time ago, as for becoming Zoo, it was also a matter of time. After completing the task, you should be able to go to the courtyard, right? I just don't know, what will be the reward this time? Beidou was talking to himself, still thinking about the rewards given by the sign-in task. Unexpectedly, his words were heard by others. Reward, what are you thinking about, kid? Leng Budding raised his head and saw that the person speaking was a strong, unkempt man with half a dog's tail grass in his mouth. For the reward that Beidou said, the strong man dismissed it, with a disgusted expression on his face, join the ghost-killing team, don't think about these things, if you are afraid of death, leave. In response, Beidou smiled lightly. He didn't want to explain anything, but proved it in another way. Besides, as weak as you are, you will die if you meet a ghost. If you want me to see it, it's better to be early. The next second, Beidou suddenly raised his head. He smiled and looked at the strong man while narrowing his eyes. At a certain moment, a strong pressure suddenly fell on the strong man's back, directly pressing him so hard that he couldn't breathe, and even the big rough black face turned into a liver-colored one. This, this is. Looking at Beidou's faint smile, the strong man immediately realized something. His eyes were full of disbelief, and his pupils shrank to the extreme. Strong, strong, how could this kid be so strong? Just the momentum has reached this level, if you really do it. Seeing that the strong man was almost suffocating, Beidou gradually restrained the pressure from the sword, and the latter suddenly coughed violently. Cough, cough, cough. Upon careful observation, he was already sweating profusely, and his heart was beating wildly, as if he might pop out at any time. In just a few seconds, the strong man almost passed away. Soon, a faint voice of inquiry came from his ear. Are you sure it's me who sent you to death? No, it's not. The strong man put his hands together quickly, and lowered his head in an extremely humble posture. How could he still show off his power just now? And when he noticed the name on Beidou's chest, he even showed a shocked expression. You, you are Beidou. Your Excellency. Beidou frowned slightly, and said lightly, what's wrong? 
He didn't expect that his reputation would spread throughout the ghost killing squad so quickly, so that the strong man suddenly changed his face. No, nothing. The strong man swallowed deeply, scratched his head in embarrassment and said, here is the information about this mission and your monthly salary. Please keep it. The monthly salary is the monthly salary paid by the ghost killing squad. Although there are only a few dozen Taisho coins, it is enough to show the sincerity of Ubuyashiki Kagaya. After all, it is not a small expense to support such a large organization as the Ghost Killing Squad. Beidou nodded slightly, and quickly left the Ghost Killing Team. Looking at his receding back and confirming that Beidou did not turn his head again, the strong man wiped his sweat with relief. At the same time, he was also thankful that he had escaped a catastrophe. As this Beidou, really a newcomer. Ha, huh, finally left. Just when the strong man was still anxious, a slap suddenly landed on his back. Snapped. All of a sudden, the strong man jumped half a meter high by reflex, accompanied by a strange cry. Ah, for the funny performance of the strong man, there was a burst of laughter immediately behind him. It turned out that they were also two similarly dressed ghost slayer swordsmen. Yusuk, what's wrong with you? Could it be that a ghost broke in? Look, it scared you, screaming like a woman. The burly man named Shangsuk turned around and realized that his companion was teasing him, and immediately blushed with anger, what do you know? I, I am not afraid. The two swordsmen looked at each other, and they both saw banter from each other. If you're not afraid, why are you yelling so loudly? I, I did that because. As if thinking of something, Yusuk, who wanted to argue, suddenly lowered his head, and his face was extremely red. After a battle between heaven and man, he finally revealed the whole story. What, you said it was the newcomer. How is it possible, he has just joined the team, how could he have the courage to be so arrogant? When they heard Beidou's actions, Shinta and Sanchuan felt incredible. In fact, a few days ago, they heard that a rookie had defeated Gotu, felt that the old players had lost face, and secretly wrote down the name. Unexpectedly, after not seeing each other for a few days, Shangji would be, bullied, by him. This newcomer is really ignorant. I think that Gotu guy is probably just pretending, maybe he just took advantage of it. I've seen a lot of tricks like this. I guess real people can't do much better. The two were discussing indignantly, but only Shangsuk knew that Beidou's strength was not adulterated, but also extremely strong. Thinking that the two friends were going to provoke Beidou, he hurriedly stopped him. Don't touch bad luck, really. When I think about it now, I'm still scared. What Yusuk said was the truth, Beidou's mere glance just now was enough to make him almost suffocate. At that time, it seemed that as long as Beidou looked at him, his body would be torn apart. Unexpectedly, Shangji's advice fell into the ears of the two, but it turned into a mockery, and they immediately turned their faces. Yusuk, why have you been fooled too? A cowardly man like you will never be able to catch up with Liangzi. As soon as the word, Ryoko, was mentioned, Shangsuk immediately blushed and faltered, stop talking nonsense, I'm. It's a pity that when he came back to his senses, how could there be Shinta and Sanchuan in front of him? Those two guys who didn't know what to do, had already gone after Beidou's figure, aiming at the village under the mountain of the ghost-killing squad. Seeing this, Yusuk let out a long sigh. These two guys, oh. I'd better notify Butterfly House earlier and prepare to, collect the body, for them. At the same time, relying on the speed of the demon power, Beidou reached the foot of the mountain in just a few minutes. As he had imagined, since the village was close to the base of the Ghost Slayer squad, it was managed in an orderly manner, and even bandits never came. Beidou nodded slightly, thinking highly of Ubuyashiki. But now it was broad daylight, and the ghosts probably wouldn't show up. Beidou just took this opportunity to investigate in the village first. Unexpectedly, he found several villagers one after another, but the answers he got were roughly similar. What the hell, boy, what are you talking about? This old man has grown up so much, I've never heard of ogres. Whose family's child is this, he looks quite juicy, really pleasing. A famous lady at the entrance of the village took her eyes on Beto and kept listening to him. From what she meant, it seemed that she wanted Beto to be her son-in-law. Young man, do you want a wife? As long as you open Jinko, I will send it to you later. Facing this aunt who was smiling profusely, Beto had one head and two big ones, 
you have grown up like this, how poor that girl is. Fortunately, he didn't say that, but turned around and left quickly. Only the aunt was left dumbfounded. Young people nowadays are really too shy. Not open at all. Unexpectedly, as soon as Beto left the village on his front foot, he found trouble on his back foot. Looking carefully, it was Shinta and Makawa who came to provoke him. Seeing the gesture of the two men rolling up their sleeves, Beto guessed a thing or two. You are the newcomer, Beto. Shinta and Makawa looked at each other and smiled, their faces were full of ill intentions. In the past few days, Beto's deeds have already worn out their ears. Fuji attacked the mountain and passed the level without injury, caught the spies of ghosts, easily defeated Godu. There are even rumors that Beto has been appointed as the pillar by default. In fact, Beto is not interested in becoming Zhu, he is more inclined to reach a cooperative relationship with the ghost killing team. If given a choice, Beto would prefer to be a guest minister. But Shinta and Sanchuan didn't think so. They only thought that Beto stole the limelight, and they had been secretly unhappy with him for a long time. More importantly, I thought Beto was physically strong. I didn't expect to be so thin when we first met. Now the two are finally convinced that Gotu must have let the water go, and all the rumors are a play directed by Beto. Hey, boy, after provoking our friends, are you going to go like this? Don't you know, the rules of the Demon Slayer squad? Rule, looking at their provocative expressions, Beto could only smile. Will the lion turn back because the dog barks? Furthermore, there has been a saying since ancient times, it is a mediocrity not to be envied by others. So Beto also smiled and opened his mouth when talking about what Shinta and Sanchuan said. Rules are made for people, not you. At first they were confused when they heard these words, but when they understood, they couldn't help being furious. Whoever you scold is not human. Koda, calm down. Makawa reached out to stop the excited Koda, and turned to look at Beto with a sneer. Since you are so confident, why don't we make a bet? While talking, Sanchuan sized up Beto with those squinting eyes, thinking he had seen through his details. Looking at your appearance, you should also be here to carry out the mission, right? How about this, let's compare and see who can find the ghost in the village first. After listening to Makawa's explanation, Shinta gradually understood, and then his eyes lit up. Yes, although Beto's swordsmanship is superb, it doesn't mean that he is good at finding ghosts. What's more, I and Sanchuan are old players. After so many years of fighting in the ghost killing team, I'm already familiar with it. This bet is completely in favor of two people. Beto is less than a little bit cheaper. Thinking of this, Shinta couldn't help grinning, as if seeing the picture of Beto being deflated. Being able to stand on top of such a genius would greatly enhance his reputation in the ghost killing squad. Beto, I know that you defeated Gotu. You do have some accomplishments in swordsmanship. Besides, with our qualifications, we are really bullying you. Kota followed Makawa's words and rubbed his fingers secretly. How about this, whoever finds the ghost first is the winner. The other party will not only pay three months salary, but also tell everyone about it. What do you think? Shinta and Sanchuan smiled sadly, as if they felt they were sure of winning. After all, the two have received professional training from the ghost killing team and are familiar with the weaknesses and hiding places of ghosts, so they are naturally full of confidence. But Beidou has only been in the team for a few days. However, the two of them never imagined that for Beidou, looking for ghosts. It's even easier than drinking cold water. Because as early as when he was inspecting the village just now, he had already smelled the smell of ghosts from the wind and determined the location of the ogre. They have already lost this bet. Seeing that Beidou was silent, Shinta and Makawa smiled even wider. They thought that the other party was afraid to accept this bet, so they couldn't help provoking words. Why, is our strongest rookie afraid? Or, everything before was a farce directed and acted by oneself. Shinta, I already said that Gotu can't lose, you still have to say he's great. The two talked to each other, like two gossiping women. On the other hand, Beidou raised the corners of his mouth contemptuously. Forget it, since you all insist on asking for trouble, then I won't refuse any more, as long as you find that ghost, you will win, right? As soon as these words came out, Shinta and Sanchuan were suddenly stunned. Immediately afterwards, there was sincere excitement, and even more arrogant ridicule, Sanchuan, this guy actually agreed. 
Ha ha, he doesn't really think it's so easy to find ghosts, does he? The two laughed and laughed for a while and suddenly stopped, because they found that Beidou did not intend to panic at all. Xingtai nodded and said, Boy, then you were ready to take the money and let us expose it. After finishing speaking, Kota and Makawa turned and left, and went to the east and west sides of the village separately. Looking at their overjoyed backs, Beidou smiled faintly. Stupid guy. Beidou placed his right hand on the Nishiran blades, his eyes suddenly flashed, and a bright blood-colored light burst out unexpectedly. It's the perfect Sisa pill template. In the past few days, Beidou has continuously sharpened the demon power in his body, and gradually figured out something. For example, his blood-colored eyes at this moment are the expression of demon power. In this state, Beidou will have the super perception ability of Seshomaru, and he can easily get information about things that happen in a very distant place, so as to obtain intelligence. In other words, the radius of 10 miles is under control. Call, he sniffed lightly, and suddenly frowned the next second. Because Beidou discovered that the ghost that was hiding in a thatched hut just now has disappeared. Is he ready to start attacking humans? Seeing this situation, Beidou narrowed his eyes slightly and twitched his figure at the same time. Interesting. Dot dot dot. A few hours passed quietly, and night fell. The village at the foot of the mountain is still so peaceful and quiet, every household is lit with candles, and there is no trace of ghosts at all. In fact, this is the case. In the world of Demon Slayer, not everyone knows the existence of ghosts, and even the ghost killing team is just a rumor. The reason is because of the old, dog, Kibutsuji Muzen. Since being chased and killed once by Ji Guiwan, Muzen has learned to hide, and even the ghosts under him have learned to grow obscenely. More importantly, ghosts are originally nocturnal. On the outskirts of the village, two figures, one big and one small, gathered together once. Well, did you find the ghost? No, I searched half of the village and found nothing. Could it be that kid is lying to us? Impossible, since he went down the mountain, he must have a mission. The two who spoke were Shinta and Makawa, and they seemed to have gained nothing from what they said. Unexpectedly, when the two were talking, there were small footsteps behind them. Gulu, and the sound of swallowing saliva, snapped. In the dead silence, a pat sound broke the silence. Feeling a hand on his shoulder, Kota frowned suddenly. He was upset when he didn't find the ogre, and Mikawa wanted to tease him here. Sanchuan, what time is it? Quickly take your hands away. What hand? That's the one. Kota saw that Mikawa was still pretending to be garlic, so he couldn't help patting it with his fat paw, wanting to push that hand away. Seeing this picture, Sanchuan suddenly shivered. Kota, that, that doesn't seem to be my hand. What? Shinta turned his head abruptly, and found that the hand was extremely shriveled, covered with goosebumps like a chicken paw, and just one glance made one's scalp tingle. Thinking of what Sanchuan said again, his head suddenly became dizzy. It's not Sanchuan, could it be? You, what did you say? Hearing Kota's voice trembling, Mikawa also turned pale with fright, and his legs and feet were also weak. Just when the two were suspicious, a weak voice of inquiry came from next to their ears, you too. Ah, Kota and Mikawa screamed at the same time and stood up in a panic. However, to the surprise of the two, when they turned around, they realized that it was not an ogre standing behind them. It was the ant who greeted Beido during the day. Seeing the flashing Nishiran blades, the ant was stunned and said tremblingly, Small, young man, what are you doing? Kota and Makawa looked at each other and scratched their heads in embarrassment. What's the matter with you? Seeing the two put away their knives silently, the ant let out a long sigh of relief, patted her heart and said weakly, What are you two cats doing here in the middle of the night? Have you eaten yet? If you haven't eaten, go to the ant's house to make do with it, don't be hungry. The ant smiled kindly. The reason why she was so friendly was because of the ghost killing squad outfit. Although the ant doesn't know what the ghost killing squad is, she knows that these people are not bad people. There was a famine in the village one year, and Ubuyashiki Kagaya went down the mountain to rescue them. So for the ghost killing squad, madam is absolutely at ease. This, Sanchuan smiled awkwardly, being frightened by the ant's enthusiasm, Shinta waved his hands helplessly. No need ant, we are performing a mission, your kindness is appreciated. Okay, young man, go back early. Shinta and Sanchuan nodded, 
and finally felt relieved when they saw the auntie carrying the basket and leaving. Being interrogated by this ant was even more uncomfortable than meeting Zhu. Where did that ghost go? Don't even think about it, even the two of us can't be found, and that guy Beto is even more impossible. Unexpectedly, not long after, a scream was suddenly heard not far from them. The two of them shook their heads immediately, and immediately realized the seriousness of the problem. Because this voice was exactly that ant just now. Thinking of this, Shinta and Sanchuan mentioned Nishiran blades and hurried away, and they came to the source of the sound not long after. Strange, monster, as they expected, the ant had collapsed to the ground, and opposite her was an ogre on all fours. Noticing the arrival of Shinta and Makawa, the two yellow eyes showed a playful look, and even swallowed. There are two more guys. Looks like I'll have enough to eat tonight. Facing the siege of two ghost-slaying swordsmen, the ghost did not retreat but advanced. Shinta and Sanchuan looked at each other, and they drew their swords at the same time, attacking the ghost left and right. Although the two have similar movements and steps, the aura they release is completely different. Koda's eyes widened, and the Nishiran blades glowed red, which was a sign of the breath of flame. Sanchuan's breath is soft, it is also the breath of water. But he is not a disciple of Yorokodaki Sakanji, because there is more than one trainer of water breathing. Water breath one shape water surface slash. Breath of flame one shape Shiranui. With the double temperature of scorching hot and cold, the ghost was startled first, and made an unexpected movement. Hearing a thud, he jumped and disappeared in front of his eyes. Shinta and Sanchuan were immediately dumbfounded. Could it be that this ghost can also walk through walls? As we all know, when the power of ghosts reaches a certain level, they can learn the ability called vampirism by themselves, such as Susamaru's critical handball, Yahaba's red arrow. And after reaching the level of 12 Kazuki, they will have a variety of vampire skills and specialize in a certain field. The ogre they were facing now was exactly like this. He used a vampire technique similar to escaping from the ground. This is also the reason why this ghost can temporarily escape Beto's sense of smell, it can be described as very difficult to deal with. Not good. Koda, behind you. Hearing Makawa's reminder, Koda turned around subconsciously, but was caught straight. The next moment, he spat out turbid blood, left a deep fist mark on his heart, and broke several ribs. On the other hand, Sanchuan seemed to be facing an enemy, holding his knife profusely in sweat. No, it's impossible. The ghost approached slowly and kept licking its lips with its tongue. It had already regarded the two of them as, extra meal, tonight. At this critical moment, the ghost suddenly froze. Immediately afterwards, he got into the ground recklessly, and Sanchuan was also dumbfounded. Ran, before Sanchuan came back to his senses, an extremely solid by Lien descended from the sky. Wow, boom, the dust stirred up in midair was cut away by this white light, piercing the ground like a silver sword. And at the end of this white light is a young man holding a sword. Koda and Makawa couldn't help but know this person. It is Beidou who is known as the strongest rookie. This kind of momentum has already far surpassed the two of them, and it is not an exaggeration to say that they are crushed. What shocked them even more was that as Beidou spun the Nishiran blades, the white light also drilled into the dirt, kicking up billows of dust. And the ghost that fled in a hurry was also thrown to the surface. Ah, the sword light pierced his whole body, and almost instantly, the ghost was shattered and disappeared into the air. In the middle of the sky, the figure stepping on the white light. It is impossible not to be in awe. And the two who were still arrogant and domineering before, have been completely blinded and opened their mouths wide. This, how is this possible? Beidou didn't even use the breathing method to eliminate a ghost just by the pressure of the sword. He has only been in the team for less than a week, and he has grown to such a degree, it's really scary. At this moment, apart from being in awe, Shinta and Sanchuan only had hot faces. They finally understood why Gotu failed. Why Beidou is the strongest rookie ever. Please, please, don't hurt me. Wait, you're not. The ant yelled hoarsely, and she is still terrified to this day. However, when she saw the appearance of the person holding the sword, the ant's expression gradually became more exciting, and her brows were also raised. Young man, why is it you? Hearing this familiar voice, Beidou, who had just retracted the Nishiran blades into its sheath, glanced coldly, and a strange color flashed in his eyes. Soon, he smiled and nodded. 
Ma'am, are you okay? No, it's okay. The aunt patted her buttocks and stood up lively again, young man, if it weren't for you guys, I would have to confess to being here tonight. Ma'am, thank you very much. She originally wanted to introduce her daughter to Beto, but now it seems that these people are far from something she can provoke. At the same time, Kota and Makawa stood up worriedly and silently walked in front of Beto. The two of them drooped their heads, not daring to meet Beto's eyes. Why, do you want to try again? Kota and Makawa couldn't help but look at each other and quickly shook their heads like a rattle. They can't figure it out. Why Beto possesses such powerful power, like a heavenly being. The gap between the two parties is simply a world of difference. How dare Shinta and Makawa dare to do it again? Recalling the previous scenes, Shinta and Sanchuan suddenly felt extremely hot and felt a wave of fear in their hearts. Thinking of this, the two made an astonishing move. Crack. With a loud bang, the two Ghost Slayer swordsmen had already knelt down in front of Beto, without even the courage to raise their heads. Against such a strong man, it's tantamount to courting death. What's more, if Beto hadn't made a timely move tonight, they would have lost their lives a long time ago, so they all bowed their heads by coincidence. Thank you Lord Beto for saving your life. Go through fire and water, and do whatever you want. In response, Beto nodded slightly. Now that the task has been completed, there is no need for him to stay. The most urgent task is to rush back to the Demon Slayer squad and wait for the meeting with Ubuyushiki Kagaya. Seeing that he was about to leave, Shinta and Sanchuan apologized for a while, and they also kept their promises and paid out a little more than a month's salary. Seeing that their attitudes were quite sincere, Beidou also responded. After watching Beidou leave, Shinta and Sanchuan came to their senses and patted their chests in fear. Sanchuan, I now believe, those rumors are true. Compared to Master Beidou, I am not worthy of being a swordsman at all, so I should ask for the hidden service. If I knew it earlier, I would have listened to Yusuke. Hearing Koda's exclamation, Mikawa also felt a lot of emotion. Master Beidou, is he really a newcomer? When they said this, Koda and Mikawa couldn't be sure. Whenever I think back to the scenes of Beidou flying into the sky, and the swordsmanship that crushed ghosts into powder with a random sword. It's enough to be recorded in the history of the ghost-killing squad. No wonder everyone says that Beidou is a genius. Now that I think about it, genius is no longer enough to describe his existence. It is more appropriate to say that he is a monster. In the eyes of Kota and Mikawa, Beidou even surpassed Zhu. I believe that after this incident, rumors about Beidou will spread like wildfire and will soon reach Ubuyushiki's ears. In the early morning of the next day, Beidou finally received a message from the crow. Quack, Beidou, give the order now. Immediately go to the courtyard of the headquarters and accept the reward for this mission. Reward, the corners of Beidou's mouth rose slightly, with a hint of anticipation. Because in addition to the rewards obtained from the task, the most important thing is that the system's sign in task has also been successfully completed. Boom boom. At this moment, there was a knock on the door suddenly. Excuse me, is Mr. Beidou here? I am Yin who is in charge of leading you. Please open the door. As Beidou expected, there was a young man completely wrapped in black, covering half of his face, waiting at the door. This is the post-processing team of the ghost-killing team. They are uniformly dressed. Most of them are composed of members without swordsmanship skills, and they are responsible for finishing the finishing work after fighting the ghosts. Seeing Beidou, Ming Yin couldn't help frowning. What's wrong? It's okay. Yin nodded awkwardly, with a hint of surprise in his tone, Mr. Beidou is younger than I thought, it's really surprising. Beidou smiled and didn't say much. Along the way, the two chatted casually, and Beidou also got a general understanding of the current situation of the Ghost Slayer squad. Different from the original plot, because the time is three years earlier, there are no familiar characters in this generation of nine pillars. The youngest are Ruzui Tengen and Igiro Obanai. Next, there are Yanzu Rengoku Shinjiro and Yanzu Himahima Kume. The remaining seats are still waiting to be filled by newcomers because the old column has just withdrawn. Surprisingly, however, it was not Ubuyushiki Kagaya who entertained Beidou this time, but one of the current nine pillars. Master Wazu, this is Mr. Beidou. I'm sorry to trouble you. It's okay, I'll go first then. That Ming Yin clasped his hands respectfully, 
and quickly walked out of the courtyard with a spring-like smile on his face. Mrs. Wazoo is still so kind and gentle. Just as he explained the matter, at the same time, the system's mechanical prompt sounded in Beidou's ear. System, check the task details. Ding, please arrive at the headquarters of the ghost killing squad within a week, and accept the Ubuyashiki Kagaya setting test, and you will receive system rewards. The test of Ubuyashiki Kagaya. What will it be? Unexpectedly, just as Beidou was about to enter the courtyard, a hurried figure suddenly broke into the field of vision. Don't follow me. The visitor had black hair and purple pupils, purple hair tips, short hair like a boy, a serious expression, and a bit serious expression. She also wears a mint-colored kocho barrette in her hair, and the feathers are like kochu's wings, swaying and swaying with the movement. How could he meet her here? Seeing this tomboy, Beto narrowed his eyes slightly. At the same time, a yin followed behind the tomboy, already out of breath. Miss Shinobu, you can't. Master Kocho told you that you can't go. Miss Shinobi, Master Wazu has already explained, you can't. Why doesn't my sister let me go down the mountain? That is because, faced with Ming Yin's persuasive persuasion, the butterfly-clothed girl seemed a little annoyed, her pretty face flushed. The reason why she insisted on seeing Wazu was because in a previous mission, someone found the trace of Shashian ghost. As long as she can kill this ghost, it is possible to fill the vacancy of the current Joju. Maybe. Dot can help my sister. However, to the girl's surprise, after hearing about this, her older sister denied the proposal and advised Ubuyashiki Kagaya to temporarily give up. The girl in butterfly clothes was indignant about this. Because in her opinion, she has already been able to stand on her own, and even competed with Sha Xiangui. That's why she insisted on finding her sister, the current Wazu. Kocho Kanae. And the identity of the girl in butterfly clothes is self-evident, it is her sister Kocho Shinobu. Are you sure your sister is in there? Miss Shinobu, really? Kocho Shinobu angrily walked to the gate of the courtyard, and the next step was to break in directly. Unexpectedly, at this moment, a Nishiran blade suddenly stood in front of her, causing Kocho Shinobu to stop. She frowned slightly turned her head abruptly, and found that the person holding the knife turned out to be a young man about her age. That faint smile is exactly Beidou who has been watching the show for a long time. Who are you? Kocho Shinobu's brows were filled with anger, thinking that he was going to stop him, he couldn't help reaching out his hand to pry the scabbard away. She raised her hand slightly, and she was about to provoke Nishiran blades. But at this moment, the scabbard suddenly shook, and the extended air wave rushed away from her little hand. Kocho Shinobu's beautiful eyes were startled, and there was a flash of surprise in his eyes. At this moment, looking at Beidou's calm smile, she only felt that she was being provoked. In such a mood, Kocho Shinobu couldn't help but have the urge to draw his sword. Are you sure you want to draw the knife? The corner of Beidou's mouth curled into a smile, and he said softly, break into the courtyard for no reason, and draw swords at the swordsmen of the same team. Just these two things are enough for you to be locked up, right? You. As soon as this remark came out, Kocho Shinobu also realized the seriousness of the problem. She wanted to speak, but she couldn't find a reason to refute, so she could only watch Beidou chuckle. Humph. After a battle between heaven and man, Kocho Shinobu finally let out a cold snort, and silently put away the rapier in his hand. Then he left the courtyard without looking back. Seeing this scene, Yin behind him breathed a sigh of relief, and gave Beidou a grateful look. Thank you, my lord. No problem. Beidou nodded slightly, watching the two leave. On Kocho Shinobu just now, he didn't feel any hostility, it was like a little girl throwing a tantrum. If she is smart enough, maybe she will thank Beidou. In fact, this is exactly the case. The reason why Kocho Shinobu in the original plot has a professional smirk is because she tried to become as gentle as her sister in her lifetime in order to inherit Kanae's behest. But this time period, Kocho Kanae is not dead yet. So Kocho Shinobu is still a childish girl, and her personality is more like a tomboy. Beidou smiled and walked into the courtyard. He believed that the next time the two of them met, wouldn't be too far away. Russell, the breeze blows across the face and what Beidou sees is a leisurely and natural pastoral scenery, where flowers, birds, mountains and rivers are full of fragrance. 
antique island wooden houses, tatami mats used to talk about tea, and sunny dolls hanging under the eaves. Such a beautiful scenery is indeed peaceful. Is this the place? Beto's mind moved, and he couldn't help blurting out. Unexpectedly, just as he was admiring the scenery, the Nishiran blades in his hand trembled, conveying a faint fighting intent. Someone is approaching. Thinking of this, Beto turned around abruptly, releasing a biting cold air instantly. As expected of a swordsman praised by my lord. It really lives up to its reputation. This voice is soft and melodious, as if it is the sound of nature, which makes people yearn for it. And what came into view was a picturesque dimple. The same long black hair, purple eyes, wearing colorful feathers with cocho patterns, and cocho hairpins on both sides of the hair. It looks somewhat similar to Kocho Shinobu just now. However, the difference is that this woman is not only tall and tall, but also has a faint smile on her pretty face, and her speech is soft and soft, making her feel like a spring breeze. Seeing her coming, Beto silently put away his sword pressure. There is no doubt that she is Kocho Shinobu's older sister and current style. Kocho Kanae, thank you for what happened just now. Kanae seemed to have guessed something smiled and bowed slightly, Shin Shinobu is still young, and her temper is also a little irritable. I will ask her to apologize to Mr. Beto afterwards. Beto shook his head and didn't say anything more. Correct. Seeing that Beto didn't speak, Kanae took the initiative to break the silence, and explained lightly, I'm really sorry, my lord's condition worsened last night, and I was escorted to the Jingu by two zoo lords to recuperate, so I was sent to pick you up. Jingu. Beto thought about it that should be the residence of the priests. It's just, what will be the test set by Ubuyashiki? Ding, congratulations to the host for successfully arriving at the sign-in location, and the sign-in officially begins. The sign-in time is one minute, and if you quit halfway, it will be regarded as a sign-in failure. Soon, the familiar countdown started again, and Kocho Kanae also took out a package with a smile. This is the reward my lord gave you. Please put it away, please. Um, Beto was moved, nodded and thanked Kocho Kanae, and took the heavy package from her hand. Although he didn't know what was inside, the weight alone was enough to explain Ubuyushiki Kagaya's intentions. Obviously, this is the other party showing favor to Beto. Kocho Kanae smiled faintly, his eyes turned into crescent moons, without the slightest airs and momentum as a pillar, more like the big sister next door. This is the real her, an optimistic, cheerful, gentle and kind woman. Kanae's greatest wish is for humans and ghosts to coexist peacefully. Unfortunately, these are troubled times. Those ghosts will not understand her good intentions, and under the influence of Kibutsuji Muzen, they will only blindly deceive and harm the people. And it was this kindness that eventually led to Kanae's death in the plot. Fortunately, she met Beido. Tragedy will never happen again. Sensing Kanae's expectant gaze, Beto nodded slightly, and directly opened the package granted by Ubuyashiki. This is, when I opened it, what was inside was not money, but a pair of bracelets made of fine steel. To be more precise, it should be a weight-bearing bracelet for training. Mr. Beto, my lord knows that you have always been strict with yourself. In order to better help your practice, he specially got rid of the knife-forging village to create this pair of bracelets. Hope you'll like it. Kocho Kanae spoke softly with a smile on his lips. I see. The corners of Beidou's mouth raised slightly, he took out the pair of bracelets from the package, and put them on his hands silently, his movements were indeed a little slow. What made Beidou's eyes even brighter was that this pair of bracelets could actually transmit demon power. This is enough to show that the material used to make the bracelet is absolutely extraordinary. Good. Sensing Beidou's happy expression, Kocho Kanae also nodded with a smile. Mr. Beto, there is one more thing to ask of you. Before the words fell, Kanae took out another document. Beto glanced at it, and found that the information recorded on it turned out to be a ghost, and the words, Major, were also marked on it. Could it be 12 Kazuki? I remember that in the original book, Kocho Kanae encountered Doma during the task. According to the instructions of the Lord, a ghost has recently been discovered in Chie Mountain. Many swordsmen have gone to investigate and returned without success. I hope you can assist in completing this task. After listening to Kanae's explanation, Beidou didn't reply, but carefully read the information about ghosts. 
Kai Yeshin, the ogre, and the swordsman disappeared. After a long time, he nodded slowly. Unexpectedly, at this moment, the system's notification sound came as scheduled. 2, 1, 0, ding, congratulations to the host, the sign-in is successful. Mission reward, move, Kanglongba. Soriapo is one of Sesamaru's most commonly used moves. It injects evil spirits on the blade and gathers it into a bright blue dragon to attack. Its power far exceeds that of wind injury, and it can even scatter explosions. It once severely injured Inuyasha. The moment the prompt ended, Beidou suddenly frowned slightly. He couldn't help but hold the trembling Nishiran blades, gently raised his fingertips, and unexpectedly drew silk threads formed by condensed demon power. By this time, Beidou had already discovered that his demonic power was turning into substance. Even Beidou himself didn't realize that he was unconsciously releasing the pressure of the sword, as well as that almost terrifying demon power. As time passed by, Beidou suddenly opened his eyes. On the other hand, Kanae behind her frowned slightly. This, is this his power? Sure enough, just like the legend, just the momentum is enough to make people retreat. It's just that he is obviously about the same age as Shinobi, so why is there such incredible coercion? What's wrong? Beidou turned sideways slightly, only then noticed Kanae's stiff expression. Hearing this indifferent inquiry, Kanae woke up like a dream, her pretty face flushed and said, No, it's okay. Then this matter will trouble Mr. Beidou. Kocho Kanae tried to keep her tone as calm as possible, but no matter how she tried to hide it, she couldn't avoid the shock just now. Beidou nodded, and quickly left the courtyard. He can't wait to try it out. The power of the Kanglong Po is broken. Call. It wasn't until Beidou left that the blush on Kanae's face faded, and she subconsciously let go of the hem of her clothes. Suddenly, she remembered the scene a few minutes ago. When we go back, we must admonish Xiao Ren and ask her to apologize to Mr. Beidou. Dot dot dot. Carrying the information entrusted by Kanae, Beidou quickly arrived near Mount Chino as shown on the map. Although Kanae didn't point it out, Beidou has already noticed that this mission is of great importance, involving the lives of many swordsmen. He successfully completed the first mission of the Ghost Killing Squad. This time, it was the same. Beidou turned into a flash of light and disappeared before his eyes. Chie Mountain is located in the northwest of the headquarters of the Ghost Killing Squad. A magical plant called Blood Grass grows on the mountain, which makes the mountain look dark red all year round, hence the name. At this time, Beidou also came to the foot of the mountain. Is this the place? Because of the perfect Sesomaru template, Beidou easily traversed the mountains, forests and fields without any feeling of fatigue. He silently released the demon power to the surroundings to gain insight into the surrounding situation. At a certain moment, Beidou suddenly felt refreshed, and he smelled a special smell in the wind. The smell of blood. With a thought in his heart, Beidou clenched the Nishiran blades almost subconsciously. What was even more unexpected was that the blade, which contained a scorching breath, began to tremble again. Faintly, that giant dragon roared and roared in his mind again. The last time this feeling appeared was in Mount Sagiri, when Beidou piloted the fire dragon for the first time. Thinking of this, a strange color appeared between Beidou's brows. Could it be that there are other things besides ogres in this Chie mountain? Otherwise, how could the fire dragon in the sword be so excited? Feeling the scorching heat coming from his fingertips, the corners of Beidou's mouth curled into a faint smile, and he quickly plundered in the direction of the wafting scent. Just as he flew over, deep in Chie Mountain. Help, help. Don't come here, please don't kill me. A young man in a black team uniform collapsed to the ground, with the word, C, floating on the back of his hand, he was clearly a Class C ghost swordsman. In the grass not far from him, there were ghosts crying and howling wolves begging for mercy, and countless flesh and blood were flying. And a huge black shadow shaking back and forth. Why are there monsters of this level? This is at least a ghost. It shouldn't be our turn at all. Zoo, where are the adults? The sea level swordsman's eyes were bloodshot, and he was already frightened and restless. Ten minutes ago, he and three swordsmen were ordered to go to Chie Mountain to hunt down the beast eating monster that the villagers said. I thought it was an ordinary ghost, but who would have thought it would be so terrifying? All breathing methods are useless in front of him. 
It was as if the chopsticks hit the iron plate one by one, and the shock force from the Nishiran blades alone was enough to give the swordsman a headache. Broken. Dead. This is what happened to them. Gulu. In the dead and silent mountain forest, the swallowing sound of the ghost stood out very clearly. The sea-level swordsman covered his mouth in fear, tried not to make any noise, and backed away. He didn't dare to go up any more, he just wanted to survive. The next moment, the ghost suddenly dropped the corpse in its hand, and turned to look at the fleeing class sea swordsman. You, where do you want to go? The scalp-numbing roar instantly woke up the swordsman. He raised his head dully, and found that at some point in front of him, there was already a huge body. It was an ogre with a mouth full of blood. This ghost has a hulking back and a hulking waist. It is clearly a human body and face, but its aura is no less than that of any ferocious beast. What is even more frightening is that there is still scum hanging from the corner of his mouth. Ghost, ghost, ghost. The sea-level swordsman was crying, his voice hoarse and bitter, but unfortunately his legs and feet were already out of order. Just at this critical moment, let's hear a click. It seems like something is broken. What? The huge ogre was startled subconsciously, but in the next second, the huge head on his neck fell straight down. Then Gu Lulu rolled to the crotch of the swordsman. Ah, the sea level swordsman's face was wrinkled into a ball, but at this moment, that head suddenly turned into dust and gradually disappeared. And the huge body of that ghost no longer exists. How? How is it possible? The swordsman raised his head in disbelief and saw a young face and the action of closing the knife. It was Beto. Is this the ghost? That's all. Seeing the disappointment in Beto's expression, the swordsman immediately widened his eyes. Lost, disappointed. Isn't this ghost enough? Wait, your black Nishiran blades, are you? Beto. Through his age and the eye-catching Nishiran blades, the swordsman quickly identified Beto's identity. Beto nodded slightly, not paying attention. In his opinion, since even Ubuyashiki marked the task as, major, it should not be so simple. Seeing that Beidou put away his knife and made a gesture to leave, the swordsman hurriedly stopped him. Please wait, please wait a moment, Lord Beidou. Beidou turned around with a slight frown, a cold look flashed in his eyes. The swordsman shivered suddenly. At this moment, the pressure Beidou brought to him was countless times that of that ghost. At the same time, the swordsman nodded deeply. He is Beidou. The man who cleared Mount Sagiri alone. Master Beidou, thank you for saving your life. Is there a problem? Sensing the indifference in Beidou's words, the sea-level swordsman took a deep breath, and said cautiously, Please wait, there is another ghost in this mountain. I think it's better to wait for Zhu to rescue him. From the words of the swordsman, Beidou judged one thing. Sure enough, was that ghost just an appetizer? Buzz. After killing the ghost, Nishiran Blades was drenched in ghost blood, trembling even more intensely. Somehow, the fire dragon could no longer hold back. In an instant, Beidou disappeared before his eyes. Only the swordsman was still in a daze, muttering to himself, as this Lord Beidou. It is indeed more terrifying than the legend. He clenched his fists and tremblingly walked down the mountain. After all, I still plan to find Zhu. Russell. In the depths of Chie Mountain, among the crimson blood grass everywhere, there is a figure advancing rapidly. Then under the mottled moonlight, one can vaguely see that this is a thin man with a thick gauze wrapped around his neck. What is even more shocking is the two X-shaped scars that run through his entire face. HMPH. The man took a deep breath suddenly, as if he smelled something special, his eyes lit up immediately. After circling for a while, he finally stopped in front of a bulging hillock and licked his chapped lips. Then, impatiently reaching out to dig. It seemed that there was something that fascinated him hidden in this small hill, so that he completely forgot about the pain, even if he wiped the wound with his finger, it didn't stop. Shockingly, his fingers were bleeding just a second ago. The next second it turned out to be intact. Not even a scar in sight. It's this, it's this thing. The more this weird man dug, the more excited he became, and he didn't realize that there was a person standing behind him at some point and the Nishiran blades suspended in midair. It was Beidou. The call from Nishiran blades grew stronger the closer he got to the depths of Mount Akano. Is it a ghost? No, there is a bigger secret hidden here. However, before doing so, Beidou must first resolve the immediate crisis. Staring at the back who was digging, 
Nishiran blades held it up high, making a beheading gesture. Let you be Kanglongpo's first kill target. Following Beidou's thoughts, the Nishiran blades instantly burst into white light, like a lonely star in the night sky. Dazzling, feeling the incisive pressure of the sword and the eye-catching light, the man froze immediately. He subconsciously wanted to dodge, but he was not as fast as Beidou. With a flash of the knife, a round arm rose into the air, followed by scorching hot blood. Beads of blood splashed onto the blade, and a swimming dragon pattern appeared vaguely, opening eyes like the sun. It was the fire dragon of that day. Ah, under Beidou's quick movement, the man broke an arm in an instant, and climbed two or three meters forward at the cost of giving up his right hand. He turned around abruptly, sweating profusely already. Who, who, the man kept panting heavily, his eyes were full of horror, and the scar on his face was even more hideous. But at this moment, the cross section of his right hand. A stump grew again. This weird recovery speed is undoubtedly an ogre. You, are you Zhu? The ghost stared at Beidou tremblingly, inevitably feeling timid, but soon, he showed a sinister smile again. I didn't expect that the ghost killing squad wanted to arrest Lao Su. A pillar will be sent out. As he spoke, the two hands under the forearm unexpectedly changed, gradually growing into the shape of a blade. As if to intimidate Beidou, the ghost deliberately chopped downwards, only to see a few pieces of gravel, like tofu, crushed into dross by him. Listen, I am the one who killed you, Lord Wakuraba. Wakuraba, hearing this name, Beidou seemed to have a little impression in his mind. Wakuraba is the third of the lower strings in Twelve Kazuki. However, in the original plot, the appearance of this ghost is not glorious at all, not even a supporting role. Because the only time he appeared was as the object of Kibutsuji Muzan's anger, he was killed by Muzan together with the other two ghosts, and turned into ghost blood and disappeared. Besides that, Wakuraba is very arrogant and stupid. Because he even ran away in front of Kibutsuji Muzan, the result can be imagined. Beidou did not expect that he would encounter a string ghost just for the second mission. According to the rules of the Demon Slayer squad since ancient times, if he can kill Wakuraba, the third of the lower strings, then he will have a seat in nine pillars. This is easy for Beidou. Buzz. The blade buzzed, and Beidou pulled out the Nishiran blades. Feeling the threat of life and death coming, Wakuraba also took a deep breath, burst out a foul-smelling roar, and rushed over quickly. His blood ghost technique is called blood blade slaughter, which turns his hands into two huge sharp blades and uses them as weapons for attacking. Before becoming a ghost, Wakuraba was a butcher in a small town, dealing with pigs, cattle and sheep all day long, and making a living by selling meat every day. Over time, he was infected by the smell of blood and murderous intent. Gradually, he took human life as a trifle, until one of them quarreled with his neighbor and killed his whole family with a butcher knife in desperation, but he didn't feel any guilt or shame. On the contrary, it is a kind of morbid frenzy and joy. It is precisely because of his annihilation of humanity that he was brought in by Kibutsuji Muzan and reduced to a man-eating ghost. Clang! With a wave of Beidou's blade, the air became restless and hot, and the invisible air flow solidified into a rushing dragon. The giant dragon howled wildly in the sky, under the dark night. Like a sky-shattering thunder. This miraculous scene is exactly Sesamaru's move. Kanglong broken. In this situation, Wakuraba, who was still boasting just now, suddenly felt his legs and feet go limp and stiff in place. He looked up at the blue and white dragon, his throat moved. This, what is this? Unfortunately, Wakuraba has no room for regret. Only death greeted him. Roar. The roar was overwhelming, and the one who complimented Kanglongpo was Beidou, who was as immobile as a mountain, with white eyes shining brightly. Infinite monster power blooms at this moment. The world is tied to a sword. White light, flames, light up this dark night. The Wakuraba in the center of the battlefield was like a fuse, triggering the noise and explosion of Kanglongpo, which stirred up dust. Ah, explosions sounded one after another, and Wakuraba rose and fell, leaving no good flesh on his body. His front feet had just healed, and his hind feet were torn to pieces by Jian Guang. Together with his two proud swords, they were already torn apart in front of Kang Longpo. Until the moment of his death, Wakuraba still didn't know. What I faced was a newcomer. He was still wondering why Zhu was so strong. 
In the past hundreds of years, even if Ji Guiwan had comprehended the breath of the sun, it was still difficult for manpower to compete with ghosts, and countless ghost-slaying swordsmen were eaten. Among them, hundreds of pillars are included. According to the usual calculation of combat power, a lower string ghost is equivalent to several ordinary swordsmen, and at least three pillars are needed to deal with the upper string ghost. But Beto, who has only been in the team for less than two weeks. In the posture of King's Landing, he easily killed the third of the lower strings, Wakuraba, which is enough to prove how powerful he is. What's more, this is just the tip of the iceberg for Beto. Is it only to this extent? Watching Wakuraba turn to dust, Beto narrowed his eyes. Black ghost blood sprinkled the grass, and the stench was lingering, but what is surprising is. Those crimson blood grasses are swaying, as if enjoying the bath of blood. White light flickered in Beto's eyes, then he raised his right hand towards the blood grass. A cluster of light quickly formed on his palm, which was clearly a characteristic of demon power. But Beto can do far more than that, and the best show is yet to come. With a thought in his mind, two small horns quietly sprouted from the light ball, extending towards the soil-like tentacles. In the next second, it was like two silver snakes burrowing into the cracks in the ground. If this scene is placed in some worlds, powerful people will definitely be surprised by it, because this is the embodiment of energy manipulation to the extreme. The reason why Beto did this was to explore the underground. He clearly felt that Nishiran Blades was already hungry and thirsty, and couldn't wait to have a full meal. Call. At this moment, a sudden change occurred, and the blood grass that was shaking in front of him suddenly shrank into thin needles, and finally slowly ignited a bloody flame. Beto frowned slightly, and couldn't help but start to think carefully. The flames burned blazingly, quickly covering half of the crimson blood grassland, but soon stopped spreading, as if they had reached the border. No doubt the flames were restrained. Um, the demon force thread in his hand sensed, Beto gently pulled it back, and the rustling sound of breaking ground suddenly came from his ears. What appeared in his field of vision was the thread constructed by demon power and a group of wrapped blood-colored stones. This stone seems to contain a kind of pure scorching energy, which fits well with Liang Ball steel. Buzz. The moment he saw the stone, Nishiran Blades finally couldn't hold back his excitement, and Beto let it go. The tip of the knife inevitably touched the blood-colored stone. At this moment, the dragon pattern on the blade suddenly burst into a dazzling red light, which reflected the stone endlessly. At first glance, Lonko has swallowed the red stone. Roar, hearing the dragon calling to him, Beto also nodded quietly. This change lasted for a full minute, until the energy contained in the blood-colored stone was completely absorbed by the dragon, and the momentum gradually weakened. Look at that Nishiran blades again. The four characters of exterminating ghosts and killing are particularly eye-catching. There is a faint flame flowing. At the same time, Beto also understood the message from Nishiran blades, that giant dragon also has its own name, but the seal has not been completely lifted, and more flames still need to be infused. In order to show its true power. Call. Beto held Nishiran blades tightly, and the connection between the two was far more natural and familiar than before, it can be said to be like a finger. In his hands, bright demon power and golden flames ignited at the same time, two different energies collided. Eventually the two became one. Because they serve one master together, that is Beto. Just when Beto felt the strange change of Nishiran blades, several figures rushed forward under the Chie mountain. Master Mingzu, the place where Beto disappeared is just ahead. Okay, I see. The person leading the way in front is the c rank swordsman who lost his life. As soon as he thought that his savior was still in the mountains, and there was a high possibility of encountering an accident, he immediately returned to the ghost-killing team for help. Unfortunately, because Ubuyashiki Kagaya's condition worsened, several pillars have gone to the shrine, and Kocho Kanae happened to be away. In desperation, the sea-level swordsman went to the butterfly house. Unexpectedly, there, he met a familiar figure, it was the former Naruju who came to visit Ubuyashiki. Mr. Kawajima Jigoro. Although Kawajima Jigoro has retired and no longer serves as the pillar, he has more or less heard of Beidou's reputation. Thinking that such an up-and-comer would encounter a ghost, Mingzu led the team to Chie Mountain without saying a word. This is how the current scene came about. Beidou, you absolutely must not have anything. Kawajima Jigoro frowned. 
What was surprising was that despite his age, he was faster than a young man, speeding like a golden lightning bolt. Gradually, everyone climbed up Chie Mountain. We'll meet Beidou soon. Unexpectedly, just as they walked halfway up the mountain, they suddenly felt an infinite pressure suddenly descending, and even collapsed a bucket of gravel. In the next second, white light and flames fell from the sky. It constitutes a scene like a miracle. Master Ming Zhu, then. It seems to be the direction of Beidou. The sea level swordsman was shocked for half a minute before he managed to recover. In fact, Kawajima Jigoro had already noticed the strangeness without him needing to remind him, and quickly moved towards the source of the sound. The same group of swordsmen also quickened their pace. If you observe carefully, you can find that apart from the deep concern between Ming Ju's brows, there is even a touch of tension. That's right, put Kawajima Jigoro on alert. The white light that broke through the sky just now, as well as the roaring black dragon, all indicate that a fierce battle broke out on the top of Chie Mountain. Such an imposing manner, even Zhu could hardly achieve it. Then there is only one possibility. Winding ghost. Even that man. Thinking of this, Ming Ju's wrinkled old face became solemn, and he climbed to the top almost in a flash. Unexpectedly, when he got there, there was only a mess left in his vision and the one standing in white light, a figure bathed in demon power. Beidou, hearing the unfamiliar voice behind him, Beidou looked back lightly. Just one glance made those swordsmen feel a strong sense of oppression. But Kawajima Jigoro walked straight up and looked him up carefully, Beidou, are you not hurt? I noticed the concern in his words and this distinctive appearance. Beidou quickly figured out his identity. Mr. Lao Sangdao misses you. It's fine, it's okay. Daha. Naruto noticed that he was addressing himself, and he couldn't help being a little surprised, because he had retired long before Beidou joined the team, and the two had never met. So how did Beidou recognize him? Fortunately, Kawajima Jigoro did not delve into it, but raised another question. Beidou, where's the enemy you're fighting with? It's, that ghost. Ming Zhu glanced around, but there was no sign of ghosts hiding, only blood grass and ashes that were still burning on the ground. The Class C swordsman behind him also looked at Beidou with burning eyes. Invisibly, Beidou became the focus of the moment. Unexpectedly, Beidou still didn't care about their questions, as if he had done an insignificant thing. Already dead, 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 the sea level swordsman was stunned, and couldn't help but want to confirm again, Beidou, you don't mean to say, that ghost was killed by you, right? Yeah, Beidou smiled lightly, and put away the Nishiran blades. As soon as these words came out, the peak of Chie Mountain fell silent. The expressions of the audience were even more exciting. Only Kawajima Jigoro in the crowd narrowed his eyes slightly, thinking. Long before this mission, Naruto had heard of Beidou's name. At first, he thought that Beidou was a talented young swordsman, but when he looked closely, he discovered. This young man is far braver than he imagined. Especially after killing Wakuraba, Beidou didn't look tired at all, and his breathing was orderly. This is enough to show that he has completely mastered the complete work Changzhong. The strength is not even under the pillar. Suddenly, Kawajima Jigoro became interested in talents, and asked cautiously, Beidou, if I'm not mistaken, you have already comprehended Changzhong, right? That's right, Mr. Kawashima. Beidou nodded slightly, without any intention of hiding it. For him, Quanzhong Changzhong is just the only way to pass, and his real power is far from being limited to breathing techniques. What's more, as time goes by, more and more people will notice themselves, and this matter is not really a secret. After hearing Beidou's answer, Kawajima Jigoro's pupils suddenly shrank. He suddenly thought of a more terrifying possibility. The earth-shattering scene just now may have come from Beidou. This young boy, Kawajima Jigoro's throat moved, and after seeing that Beidou was indeed not injured, he woke up the swordsmen who were still in shock. Since the matter has been resolved, everyone should go back and report as soon as possible. Don't worry my lord anymore. The swordsmen suddenly realized, and nodded one by one. Beidou nodded and quickly integrated into it. Not long after everyone left, another figure appeared in Chie Mountain, and followed the white light to the crimson blood grassland. It was a thin young man with a cropped red hair and a vest with the same color as his hair. His skin looked extremely pale under the moonlit night. 
What's even more strange is that the young man is engraved with striking dark blue marks of crime, which seems to be a heinous person. Prickly, the red-haired youth bent down and squatted on the grass. He gently picked up the soil with his index finger, stuffed it into his mouth and tasted it, and the next second, his blue pupils lit up instantly. What a powerful force. Is it really just celebrity people? It really excites me. The young man was talking to himself, with a fanatical smile on his lips. He has his eye on Beto. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.